Trump's yeah. capability. <laughs> how do you feel about <laughs> oh it's live yeah. now? <laughs> it's live. <laughs> If I do okay, vertical, okay. I can get a chat in case. Yeah. If I do vertical. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's cool. We did vertical, you do what? Okay, I won't be able to chat because then I I have to always move the whole thing. But yeah, we will. You can make ah. this special sign of woo. Yeah. <laughs> I will just talk on top in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. So Carson is joining. Who else is coming? Any of the translators? Um, no, because it's well very last minute, so they couldn't make it. Yeah. So yeah, I I I, for, I, for, I forgot to ask. Oh, well, it's pretty. It's pretty okay that they're not. Uh, I was thinking about it, but then again, what they can only say is how they like felt about the translations and so, but they, they would not be able to answer the, the main questions that I have, so so it's okay. Yeah. All right. All right, we're live on Twitter and Facebook, so that, that's um, we're live now. Did you, were you able to uh, do the whole Facebook thing, Ini? Um, I think I... Uh, You're mute. Oh, yeah. um, I'm sorry. Oh. You need to no, make the okay. cross person if you. Could. Yeah, I will. All right, uh, Thomas. Do your thing. Do the first. First, do your um, um, commercial thing. I think <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> okay. Well, cheers. Then I. I, I got my tea. <laughs> but it's, uh... I also have water here. <laughs> Good. So we will start then. Welcome to the slow jam. This is an sending episode to respect the people behind this series on, on Diplomacy Now about indigenous governance, indigenous diplomatics. I have been asked to share this or I have been given the privilege to myself. The idea is to discuss a bit how the episodes were built, crafted, what kind of funny moments we had and just talk about both process. I have with me the whole group behind the scenes. We have here Casale Ojarella, that has been the main uh, guy on, on following and leading the process. We have Tomo Harara, one of the members of the group, Carson Kipuru, member of the group, Melanie Nelson, member of the group. It's in there. Ini Quirlipi Jadi. Hopefully nice. that was like great nice. fun. <laughs> so, so let's us um, go to the actual actual starts and let me just uh, start with Ghazali. How everything happened? How the idea was crafted? Why? How did you? Uh, came up with the with the, with the approach of, of, of focusing to this all please the floor is yours jeez um i don't know uh well definitely <laughs> i think it all started with <laughs> I, know, I remember tomo asking in, in the chat before like before we uh like an hour ago like all right where do where, where should we start um uh, should we start at tea time <laughs> should we start before that um i think well, it's almost like you, you can add or, or um, if you if you feel like I should go further back. Let, let me start with um, the end of tea time. Um, so I did I did uh, five days of tea time, which is actually pretty similar, but not just like it's people and allies talking about um, yeah the impacts of COVID-19 on indigenous peoples, because I saw that um, there were a lot of webinars that they were starting to do webinars um but they're mostly regional 
um, only webinar uh, for people in Latin America, only webinar for people in North America. But I didn't see a, a, um, like a global approach to things. So I figured like, like let's let's do something that, that's much a little bit more global. So that the tea time I got a group of people. Um, because before that I just did like Zoom calls uh, with with um, you know, people actually people that are part of the, the this this team actually were in the first Zoom calls that we just, just chatted away like all right uh, what are you experiencing and then uh, came up with the idea of tea time and that was, that was pretty intense five days uh, every every day um, so that would be 10 p.m. Geneva time for two hours. And what happened afterwards was like, um, yeah, there should be a follow-up, but I didn't know what kind of a follow-up. Um, so I think, and that's where you came in, Thomas. Uh, you sent me a text, uh, like, hey, I have an idea. Um, and because we were working on so some issues, um, for, that, for example, the enhanced participation issue, uh, we're doing a lot of negotiations, and um, you are president of the Summit Parliament in Finland. So those are three things that are, um, yeah, that are very interesting, at least to us. And we, the people that the the circle that we move in, um, are also like very engaged in diplomacy and governance. So, uh, yeah. So I, I remember uh, I was still in lockdown. I think you too as well. That we, um, yeah, we did. We talked a little bit, brainstormed. And it was like an hour and a half brainstorm. And then um, I think I had to think it over, like, like what, what is the right format? Because uh, otherwise it would have been like a, like, a, like a normal webinar kind of thing, but I wanted to make it a little bit more different. Uh, also making sure that, yeah, like all these voices are once heard, uh, for one, heard. Uh, all all these people that we work with, that the people can um, yeah can get to know them, and also what I also wanted is to make it very interactive, um, but also like in the in the time of now that um, yeah a lot of people don't have like a lot of retention time, so so that's why I first came up with um, yeah the one on one conversations. So introducing the people that we work with a lot, um, and obviously, not everyone that we work with uh, was available. Um, so that's why we, um, we we came up. Thomas and I we came up with the list. It was like I don't know what sixty people maybe. Let's not go that fast, Ghazali. We have oh fuck. all right, all right. Fun. So so I do remember. Tell me to stop our, then. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do. I do remember our discussions on on building the uh, building the the specific specific series and mm -hmm. and uh, those that might not know that might see this episode um, uh, live or, or afterwards. Uh, I, I had in my mind already the of course the approach that when you had already already a platform called local podcast. It was easy to 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 utilize that. You had already done many different approaches, discussions in the podcast um, about different topics that I have been also involved before. So I, I I thought that well, this is a good opportunity to utilize that. But how did you how did you react when I came up with the messenger and and we had a call? What was your first? Told about the topic, the the approach that I pro, uh, proposed to you. Uh, I was like, first of all, I was like, oh, this guy again. No, nah, not nah, kidding, kidding. Actually, it was a. Um, it, it, I was very pleased actually that you came up with it with the idea because uh, um, I wanted to do some kind of a follow up, but I didn't know like what what would be like what should we talk about because um, there was a lot of a lot of things that's been said in the, during tea time, and I was like, yeah, 
oh like but like are you going are we going to zoom in focus who we're going to in, invite um so when you sent me the text um i was like oh right so at least yeah let, let's let's try to take on this one um because it's also very comfortable comfortable topics at least for me to talk about like diplomacy and as participation governance um so which is I think also a lesson actually, like, because tea time was already like very outside of my comfort zone. Um, as in like bringing, not only bringing people together, but like doing something live, uh, but like in terms of content, um, you might like, it's very important that you talk about something that you are very comfortable talking about and not talk about something that you are not very intimate with you can you can have an interest of course but like if you're not in, in, intimate with it with a, a topic it will be like a deadly silence um um at some point mostly in the beginning um so um yeah so so that was my feeling actually so, all right great uh thank you so much um for, for coming up with it with the idea and and you, you, yeah i think like the best way to describe it is like you you serve me the ball and i just ran with it um in a way i agree I, I agree with that i do remember that um when we had our discussion you you said to me uh, that you would like to work it on a paper give it some twist from your from your side and and let's see how how that would fly what did you think then when you were and what kind of aspects do you 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 uh, wanted to um, put to the series because we we started to build up a concept note mm -hmm. that would that would uh, uh, build up the road for the episodes and the whole thing. And and I, I think that we didn't know where it would lead us. But but it, you started to 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 draft the concept note. I didn't take part of it at, actually at all. I was just uh, 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 having the first discussion with you, and then we had agreed that we would come up and discuss more when you have. A draft. So, yeah. how, what, how how was the drafting? Uh, how did you and what did you did you have any aha moments when you were drafting the concept notes? Um, well, I, I think remember, first thing that I did was to um, I think like I reached out individually to um, Melanie uh, Ini. I think the first one that I, that I approached was Ini actually because he has a lot of like he he's uh, one of the hosts of TV Indigena. So I checked in with him because I had a like one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, and we had so many great ideas about like, all right, how are we going to like amplify indigenous voices using Facebook, YouTube, and all these media platforms? Um, so because I, I didn't have anything put on paper yet, uh, I just wanted to check in with with people first. All right, any, uh, what's your idea? Uh, checked in with Melanie, Drumbeat Media, um, and and then and Tomo and Carson, and so I, I brought in people that are actually filling some voids that I had. So like media, uh, Carson, Ini, um, and, and, and Melanie, um, Tomo is like the wide angle lens as, as in like a, he, he can, yeah, like he's an he's a, he's a academic and, and like yeah, real comfortable like, t like exchanging thoughts, brainstorming with him. Um, Hoki, uh, I brought in Hoki as well, Jocelyn, and speaking of Hoki, she's with us as well. Hello, <laughs> um, hi. Hello. Hello, hello everyone. Hola so, todos. Um, where was I? Yeah, so, so and, and then I started to, 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 uh, to think about, all right, um, what do we want? What do we want to, of course, like content is, 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 uh, is already said and done. Well, diplomacy, governance, and the enhanced participation process. But what is the package that you that you bring at it? Um, I we started we started thinking about some people that we wanted to bring in, but I was like, all right, let, let, let's let's do a wish list. Like, I, like who really do we want to bring in? So like, yeah, made a list, and then and then you have to come up with a format. Um, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just I, I simply aha moment was on YouTube. I just Googled. I uh, went, went on YouTube and I was looking at, all right, um, I'm at some live streams, uh, YouTube videos, I'm like, yeah, this is not it, or this might be an idea. 
And so from everything that I liked, I, I just um, made a combination. And then I stumbled on like two formats that I really loved. One is what now turns out to be the one-on-one -on -one conversation and one would be the round table conversation. Um, so, and, and, that, and then we started, I started like, um, yeah, throwing in uh, like some ideas on into what, what turned out into a concept note. Um, so before even a, a one word was written in the, in the concept note, like uh, there was like hours of conversations and, and, and talks and, and research um, that, w that went beforehand. Um, Good. That was that was uh, interesting to know. So, Tomo, what was your first feeling when Ghazali approached you with this idea? Though I understand that you have a continuously connection with Ghazali also, but when this mm. idea came out, what was your first reaction? Well, you know. Um... Ever since the lockdown, Ghazali has been working on many projects. Um, and I've, like Thomas said, I try to keep up with him uh, because, you know, Ghazali is obviously a very interesting and, and uh, figure and very takes a lot of initiative um, in setting up spaces for not just for indigenous peoples, but people like myself to, to, uh, to, to be part of, of, of something that, that turned out to be very good and uh, in the end, excellent in the end. Um, so um, I knew this was going to happen, but I think I didn't enter the scene for a while. Um, I just wanted, you know, I just wanted self to develop um, uh, by Ghazali and by Thomas uh, and, and Ini and, and Melanie. Um, uh, I, I don't know, sometimes, you know, you, as, as an outsider, you feel like, you know, where, 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 do, I, where do I need to associate myself in this? Um, that, that's always been a struggle for me. Um, whether I'm in a, in a venue like the UN or in a virtual venue like this. Um, but, you know, when, when, when Ghazali said there's a project going on and he asked me why, why I am not part of this uh, <laughs> to, uh, to the, to, for a certain period, um, uh, I, I felt the sense of, you know, FOMO, like fear of missing out, you know? <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I gradually said, hey, I, I can do a lot of background work. You know, um, because that's that's where I felt like I belong. Um, but um, you know, as as with any you know appeal of being part of Ghazali's team is that you want to get more and more involved um, <laughs> because because he show because he shows you right. Um, uh, this is this is how um, this is how it is, and and, and he, he leads from the front. So so oftentimes you just end up following. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and then here I am uh, talking about behind the scene um, and having the privilege to to, to share my thoughts. Um, but generally, you know, whenever Ghazali proposed something, it's always, I mean, from a from from a you know bird eye view, uh, there's always been a struggle. Um, I know that you know he tried to organize a very very in depth seminars on many you know issues, try to get people together. Um, but you know, it's it, it never went the way expected. But we also learned something. And I think this is just a culmination of, of, of Ghazali learning um, a lot, working with uh, other people and, and building that, you know, team um, that, that really believes in what he does. Uh, and that's, um, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just one of those uh, humble followers um, uh, having the opportunity to, to, to host uh, a group of people who are very distinguished <laughs> and, and a long history of, of 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 um of um advocacy and and but th th this, is, this is what it is i mean you know Kazali, i mean for me he doesn't really care whether you're a beginner or a veteran you know as long as you have the uh, motivation and, and 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 drive to to achieve something then then, then anyone can really be part of his team uh, and that's that's what i appreciate the most about him good melanie you've known Kazali for a long time you've been following uh, the work, uh, what we have been doing, I guess, um, from the start where Ghazali has uh, taken the first steps. Well, not maybe the first steps in UM, but uh, first steps in sense when he's been ready to take the leadership of, 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 of having action and speaking there. Um, so so um, Ghazali approached you uh, straight after the discussions that we had 
what kind of impression did you have? Yeah, because it's true, I go a long way back. Uh, I do actually, I did actually see Kasali the first time he came to the UN already, you know? He's, ah, I consider nice. him my, <laughs> he was a teenager. <laughs> I knew his mother, so uh, I have a long way uh, or long history inside. So I'm almost, you know, the old time here for once. <laughs> Even, uh, so, but uh, no, so I consider him my little brother, actually. But that's, of course, it beyond the, the cause, uh, you also have these deep human connections, right? So um, so for me, uh, yeah, I, I love the way we have functioned already before together, using each other to brainstorm, have visions and move forward. And I think um, Gasali is somebody that also, and also you, Thomas, of course, we have also um, met many times here in, um, in Geneva. Mm -hmm is that yeah like this this vision right like uh, that we want to yeah unite forces and actually get things done and uh, that's something i like about you guys <laughs> and i've always appreciated and so we already had a long history of that, doing that and especially also of course during covid no that we already were i mean i had this deep concern of uh, you guys not coming here actually anymore mm -hmm. to the UN in Geneva and that that there would be like a trend coming for after of how to participate best uh, and that this virtual space actually we have to somehow make it be our advantage rather like uh, because the issues are there more than ever now we have the need to actually do things and uh, COVID have only uh, made things basically harder and or opening the eyes for maybe some people but at least we already had started this process. So for me, when I heard that this thing was going to take off, I was just totally in from the beginning. And because, yeah, I also see the potential of what we're trying to do, actually, you know, and we all have these, these deep uh, visions of how we could maybe actually move on, but also include people. So I was just excited and uh, loving the, I, I am also, not indigenous, so I understand, of course, um, some of Tomo's point of view and so on. And I have more been supporting all the time, more also discreetly from behind my camera. Uh, so, but uh, I still have these like advocacy, um, some of the deep issues that we wanted to touch through the discussions. I mean, I thought that was uh, was inspiring. And of course, going to the the most inspiring people of you all, no? So um, a lot of heroes was on the list, of course, of who we wanted to include. <laughs> and uh, so a lot of mentors as well, no? So for me, that was, I just love to be part of it. I didn't need to be, of course, speaking. It's like seldom that I do. Mm -hmm. I am, of course, camera shy since I like to be behind the camera. But I like that... Uh, to participate it maybe even less up front <laughs> so, but yeah Good. but i think it's this what i like during the process a lot is this uh, that that the spirit that we have shared um amongst each other also like being very inclusive and exactly comp complementary and of course Gasali has been uh, pushing it all, no? And he brings out the best of people, I think sometimes, including myself. So so that's uh, that's been a good a good thing. But I don't want to say too much now. I'm sure I have a lot more to say. Yeah, of course. Any impressions on on on, on this specific series when this Ali started to have a dialogue about this? Uh, yes, it actually, it's one. It's a nice. Uh, it's great to share this moment to, with all of you. Um, yeah, starting with the tea time, uh, so many uh, ideas came out. So many things that I think is possible. Uh, especially Gasali and me we were totally. You know, I think all the people here that. With indigenous people, we need to come together. We need to work together to make, to achieve things. And yeah, he, when he told me the, the idea, I'm, I almost like do live every single night uh, with the indigena. So sometimes we have three, for example, today we have four lives. 
like all day long so and i like i like the idea, idea also because our people they can have something to to watch or different or to learn from the from the leaders from the experience and then i know a lot of like young people that they are into this world that they would like to keep going and so and as melanie said Casari with the, his energy and everything so and made me like also coming to that i really i was like oh that's really nice let's do that that's gonna be amazing i i like those kind of things you know imagine that uh, i hope one day we can make like live videos from i don't know a cup uh, to spanish speakers or to everyone in Avia Yala. so things that they can see that from from the from their house from i don't know from their work so how does it work and how the people the diplomatics like uh, from indigenous people they work they how work hard especially i never forget uh, this last cop from madrid that's my first one actually yeah and i met everyone there uh, uh tomo and gasali i think we were the last one uh, in madrid waiting that uh, i don't know at what time i live almost uh, before midnight and so it's just really nice for me because i also didn't understand that word how does it work yeah i had i was supposing but now i saw myself and just to listen to the leaders and how hard it is and then we have now the uh, legal instruments also that we can use it also in a national way in the regional way so i think it's amazing to share those, those kind of uh, important things to all the people so uh, i'm glad how, how we did it and it was crazy i can say it was crazy also because it's challenging because we live in different time zones really. i can say you know and now Tomo is on this this side, it's in our side. <laughs> so but it's one of the things that I can like highlight you know, the time zone that we have been trying to to make the working group. It's one of the like challenging things, but it's just amazing. Thank you. Good, nice, nice. Well, Hoka, what was your feeling when Gazali approached you and asked to join this group? Well, the first thing I was impressed because I met him in at the COP twenty five, but uh, almost at the end, <laughs> not really before, but uh, but uh, but I I was very happy <laughs> to be part of the team times to talk about what happened in our nations or indigenous people uh, for COVID-19. And then we were talking in different moments. <laughs> uh, the other thing, I was impressed because I didn't speak very well English, I, I am learning. <laughs> and then I, I tried to, to follow them. <laughs> Uh, in different moments, uh, but I, I was happy because they in include me. Uh, besides, I um, speak Spanish. Uh, really, I feel good in with this group, and because I understand, we try to be together, to learning, to share to be part of the movement, indigenous movement. Uh, for me, it's more learning and listen and to be very uh, flexibility and to be part just to try to contribute a leader. Uh, and it was great to listen the different indigenous people around the world talking about 
uh, how we can continue with this movement and and to continue dream and to understand better our realities in the diplomacy and uh, indigenous rights. I think it's very important to include different people because uh, we were listening a lot about uh, the continuous youth people, but for that we need to include. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then the only thing, the only way we can learn is when we continue to include others. Uh, for me, it was great to to talk with each one here and to listen then and how they are passion and how they are a uh, see the world and how they understand uh, the realities of our context the reality of our spirituality i think it's not only to talk in in tune on facebook or in google meet whatever a uh, social media uh, that is one way, but when we are in some uh, a meeting uh, physically, uh, uh, many, many of indigenous people try to uh, to continue, I don't know how you say that, to push, not to push, no, to, to mm. push it, this movement, uh, because we believe in our people, we are indigenous, and, and we understand what happened in our context and our dreams is com come from, from our ancestors uh, and that's very important for us. Well, in just uh, feel well, <laughs> happy. It's an amazing group, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I just want to say that, <laughs> thank you. Good. Carson, Zali approached you about this uh, before you were um, put to the list, I guess, or, or the original um, idea were discussed. You were then going to be afterwards also as a, as a, as a panelist. Uh, what were your first feelings and, and impressions about the idea that Kazali came up and, and started to talk with you also. Well, thank you so much, um, Thomas. And it pleases me uh, to be in this very important group right now, especially for this kind of uh, unpacking what we're doing. We're really proud of this. Team. And to come back to uh, what we are talking about, <clears throat> the origin of how to indigenous now, and how I came to to be informed by Kasai. Uh, well, um, certainly, uh, as everyone has already mentioned, tea time was the connect, and we started talking. I started listening to you and Ghazali on tea time, discussing very important matters, sometimes light, sometimes afterwards, uh, because this is the journey that we've all endeavor, endeared ourselves to do for the people, for the indigenous people's movement. And um, already Ghazali knew me from Comedy Forum, uh, was it in 2018, all the way to 2019, uh, because we made uh, through the project access training by Tribalin, which he, he was my mentor and trainer. And so uh, he already knew what I was doing, my interest in media, uh, most of it, almost all my media stuff uh, is self taught. And so he was impressed. Uh, those are things that he told me. <laughs> and uh, so when we, when, when you guys were talking about tea time, uh, I was impressed, and we usually you, we used to chat with Kazali on just the, the normal texts, like, "Hey, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Uh, congratulations on what you're doing, all that." And so, uh, COVID nineteen came in, and in in any step in uh, in a very good way, making us engage, and we could see life that hey, 
there's a lot that we can do right now. We can organize ourselves, we can do a lot. And uh, there was this day that, then one day, there was this day that is told me that if I was comfortable with an image that he sent me, <laughs> quoting him, and his body told me, like, bro, can you leave with this? <laughs> and um, the thing is, it was a beautiful return how to indigenous now graphic. The, the, you remember the blue one, uh, the how to indigenous now? And I was like, there's nothing I can change if I was going mm -hmm. to, even if I was the owner. <laughs> so, and he just told me, like, um, uh, fingers crossed, there's something okay. coming up. I didn't know what it was. And then uh, a short while later, he tells me that uh, um, Thomas and I are doing this, da 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 da, this Rambit Media. Honestly, um, Melanie, I'd never known about Rambit. I knew at that time, I never knew about Rambit. I'm still in my baby steps anyway, in the indigenous people's movement, because I'm just um, international, globally, I'm. Um, I would say I'm four years old, I'm um, three and a half years old. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so the graphic was beautiful and I told him, yeah, I'm on board. Whatever you are discussing, I want to be there. And that's what I told him because for me, media, indigenous people's movement, I was born to do everything concerning that. And I was just on board before hearing everything. So uh, by that time, I already knew, of course, because I already knew about the skills that I have in multimedia, social media, and uh, I couldn't let him finish the statement. I think he remembers because it was a call. <laughs> and I stopped him and I told him, stop right there. Don't, don't give me the concept. I already know. And let's do this because we had done the project indigenous the one for tea time was it 30 feet or something <laughs> remember you showed us a lot of stuff anyway. and so uh, let's just see that i was born to do this and i'm really grateful uh, to our creator and to you guys to be here to do this for the indigenous people yeah thank you thomas oh, thank you so Gasali. You had discussions with me. You connected the group that you had already to a certain extent in, in place. Started to float around the, the idea. Now, those were the first steps of this, this um, process on, 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 on building the episodes on how to indigenous now. Why and how the concept note was important or what kind of role did you see in, in and, and as a tool, how did you use it? This might be interesting for an individual that is considering to follow up to these same kind of seminars or, or discussions uh, about certain topics. So um, what would be your advice in a, in, in a way of describing what was the concept now? What kind of different elements you identified uh, so that you would have a clear plan? I think, I think like a, a, a concept note is like a Bible. Um, well, no, no, sorry, not, not like a Bible. Sorry, I think that's a very, very bad analogy. Um, it is, you need something to be able to um, use, that you can use as a, a, a tool that you can always refer back to. Um, like I have a, many things in my head, ideas, um, but it's useless if it stays in your own head. Um, if you want to build something that you would like to see manifest, uh, first thing that you have to realize is that you can't do it by yourself. Um, the second thing is like you have to find people that are willing to at least listen to your idea. And then they, they well, Carson is, is the exemption, uh, but like, uh, but like people need to, some people are readers, like need, they need to be able to read what, what, what you're meaning and they wanna be able to reflect on, on things. So a concept note is, is a very important. Um, and I think like, I think the concept note that, that, that I, we wrote, on that, well, mostly I, sorry about that, um, is, is a very different one uh, than a normal concept note. Uh, because um, I, th I think I included a lot of things in the concept notes so that people could really get an idea, not just the team, but also the guests could, could really get an idea of um, what we're trying to do. Um, so, um, of course, like the why you're doing it, um, 
the tone of voice and I like what uh, what are we expecting? Like it should be like informal talk, not not very formal UN lingo. Of course, when you talk about diplomacy and governance, then you, you go into very difficult words, but easy language, so it's an easy question so that people can understand actually at least the answer. Um, if you have a very complex question and the answer, doesn't matter if it's easy or, or, or less easy, but people will have a hard time understanding because first they have a, um, have a yeah, take time to understand the question. So the whole concept note was built on, yeah, making it easy for people to understand, um, yeah, what what we're trying to achieve here. Um, it includes a, a timeline, a flow, um, uh, guest lists, so that people know, all right, uh, who is going to be going to be part of it, um, who will be who's the team. Um, so I think like the whole concept note was, I don't know, like. like 10 to 12 pages, something along, along those lines. Um, but like, it was very, it is very important for like to get people over the over the threshold, like get getting people on board. After that, after the first after the first episode, it's like it's like an easier roll from there because people already are used to the to to the format and everything else. Um, so, in terms of like um, advice to people that want to do the same, is to put as much um, information, uh, like get things out of your head, you know, like as, as, keep as less as possible in your head, put it on paper. Um, yeah. And have a read through with, with, with the team. I think that's in retrospect, I would have loved, um, if we had, if I would have done it differently, I would have uh, gone through it more thoroughly with the team. All right. Like what, what are we missing? Uh, what can, what, what can we do better? Um, so yeah, I think a concept of what was, um, uh, what was, what was very, very important for, for, for the duration of the show, at least from, from my point of view, I don't know what, what the, what everyone else thinks. Good. Um, so how did you identify who to be invited? Who would be the guests? Gazali? how did you come up with the list that you came up? Oh. Uh, Thomas, if I may, like I saw, I saw Melanie. It's so like, oh, I wanted, to, I wanted to say something uh, about it. Uh, before, if, if that's okay, before I go into like that. No, you, you can, you can share this, and I will be combining these two to the others also. Oh, oh sorry. So, right. Right. so uh, coming up with, yeah, like it's almost like a wish list. Like, who would be awesome on on a show? Like, who who we who we're, we're talking to in the works uh, when when. When we go to um, Madrid, the COP, or the General Assembly, um, Geneva, um, who we would like to work, we would like to work with, listen to, but also um, there are also people that of the most of the indigenous movement do not know about, and so like I saw that like. It could be a, a a a good opportunity to amplify those voices. Um, people from the like so like yesterday we had my senior man. Like not a lot of people in the movement know her. So it's, she's young. She's a youth leader, but also a lot of people don't know Pavel Sulyanziga. And like he's been in the movement for a very long time, but not a lot of people know him. So like I saw it at least from for, for me. Like, I saw this as as an opportunity to like all right, who do we want on the list? I even included. Um, Rigoberta Menchu, like, 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 it wouldn't it be awesome to have her on the show as well? You know, so like, you can. It is very important that you, um, yeah. If if you do a show like this, get a like, the, get a like a shopping list, like who your your wish list, and just um, send them. Try to find out their emails. Send them the email, and if they respond, they respond. If they don't respond, which it's fine. Um, and, and that was my fear a little bit, like oh, like oh, I um, so we wrote like, can I can I say it? yeah? Of course I, I, I can say it now. All right, we wrote to like sixty people. Uh, we we found all these all these emails. Um, some of them couldn't, uh, which is fine. Uh, others uh, didn't respond re respond, which is fine. Uh, but like the people that are, at least the, the number of people that have been part of this whole series is like 100% more than I actually expected. 
because uh, I was expecting like uh, only 10 would, would respond positively. Um, so that na that list, um, I sent, I, I made a list and then I sent it to you, Thomas. Thomas added some names um, and then, yeah, we sent out some, and, and then like, I, I don't know about you, Thomas, but like, I didn't want to like, um, how do I like, audit it too much? We sent out those emails and then let them decide if they want it to be on mm -hmm. on, on the on, on the show and not like oh mm, no nah, he's not good or she's not good no but like like set it out and then like see see where he uh, see who responds yeah no i agree I, I i think that it was a shopping list uh from the kind of positive perspective also that we tried to uh have almost everybody on the list uh, of course, it's it's impossible to have everybody, but we we try to cover the list from all different processes, all different regions and aspects. Um, Melanie, thinking about yes. the concept now, it was formalizing the shopping list or the guest list was was uh, identified. Uh, what kind of uh, remarks would you like to emphasize on on on, on the concept note? and the list of the guests. Yeah, no, because exactly. I think uh, we it really helps us to know that we're all on the same page somehow. Um, so I think it's like an essential piece there, no? that uh, that even if uh, it's Kasali who's great with words, actually, and also putting it down on paper, but it, it really supported us all, I think. And also, when you enter a project like this, because then you also know that the other people that join, they actually we will always stay on the same page. And sometimes we were also like getting carried away with some of the episodes and and almost like, you know, like, oh my God, then we can also take it this and that direction. And and there, and where we then at least, oh yeah, remember we are still actually about uh, how to do indigenous now, you know, like it, somehow it helped us actually always um, getting things uh, also, yeah, staying on track um, then, I'm sure we can find new ways how to develop it, <laughs> but at least we had this thing always on the, because I think also like, uh, I knew about Carson, by the way, before <laughs> he may not have known me, but I had heard a lot about Carson before. So I, and uh, I always wanted to actually meet up and join forces with him because I already heard so many good things now and uh, working with media like myself. And so, uh, so yeah, so this is also the gift of it. I, that was just a side note. But uh, as to the guests, uh, I mean, there were some names that were just super evident when when you have already participated in this uh, in yeah international indigenous diplomacy world, no? Like uh, so yeah. So but I love that we exactly try to um, to simply think who were all these brains and try to bring them together to inspire and also to make them actually. Um, work or, or to try to maybe also make them collaborate even more or to yeah so um so that so that was super interesting tomo what how do you how do you what, what were your thoughts about the initial wish list and uh, and how all came together in the concept note To be honest, I was actually quite overwhelmed um, by the number uh, of guests who are willing to actually uh, take their time to join the show. Um, I know, for example, yesterday we had, I don't know, 15, originally we had about 17 guests and I was like, oh my God, like, how, do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you get, get, get um, these people to um, stay on time at the same time, like, you know, be able to have the opportunity to, to discuss everything that I wanted to say. Um, but for me, I, I was just so happy um, to see, you know, the, the faces that, that we should have seen this year. Um, uh, and that, um, uh, but new names as well, but most names, you know, you, you, you hear them even though if you don't meet them. Uh, and, and of course, um, uh, just, just, just a very, um, Kind of idea that these people are coming together and and, and, and discuss uh, on the issues of today but also you know to kind of catch up so there's like kind of social aspect of 
you know, everybody interacting with each other to see, you know, where, where, they, where do they connect? Uh, because, you know, you see people in different processes, but, you know, they, they all somehow seem to know each other. Um, and, and, and this, this kind of dynamic is very, uh, for me, was very interesting to kind of see, or, or at least for me, from the beginning, it was very interesting for me to understand how they all connect. Um, um, but yeah, I, I was, I was just uh, very positive um, uh, to have this many people um, being interested in, in this project and, and to be able to, uh, to take part in it. Um, um, but then, yeah, I mean, that, that brought up a whole lot of whole host of logistical questions and, and translators and, and time and all this. Maybe we can talk about it later. Um, but that, that, that challenge was definitely worth it for me. <laughs> I'm pretty Good. sure for the team as well. How did you feel about yeah. the list of the people and the concept note when it came up to the final version? Well, remember when, when Gasly was really excited, like, look, I would like to, to interview uh the chief uh uh what's little his name yeah. little child we all love yeah you are <laughs> yeah. All right. and me as you as you know as i said at the beginning that i'm new into this uh thing i'm like okay <laughs> typing you know on google like <laughs> chief little child. and actually i didn't know a lot of use my leaders also that he was one mm, one of the show but it was really nice and yeah just to have him with all those like great leaders it's amazing for me so i was happy i was meeting new new leaders i can't say that that way you know and uh all it was really like something that i've been learning with you all of you even to them in that team that you guys uh, know a little bit more, a little more uh, about those topics. And but the point is, uh, just to uh, listen what they have it, what they have been going through. So for me, like taking like one guess or saying like I would like to have you know interview him. So for me, it's almost everyone were like and that was new. Everyone was new for me. So that's. But I, I'm glad to see. Uh, I remember that exact point. Yeah. And Gasali was excited, like, excited yeah, here, I, like I, I just remember you remember like, Tomo. The guest was confirmed. Gasali would type on a messenger, like with a siren, saying, "Like uh, Chief Little Child is confirmed. Um, yeah. Megan Davis is confirmed." <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, at that at that time, I didn't really share that level of enthusiasm. But then over time, it's like, "Wow, like this guy is really." <laughs> 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 um, so, so, so if if that if you did, if you thought that wasn't working, you were wrong. It was uh, it was certainly um, kind of bringing up that momentum uh, to to climax. So it was yeah, it was that's just a part of. One, mo one moment that I remember uh, a lot because this kid's kept, phone kept on ringing. <laughs> yeah. Cute. Yeah, because well, like, uh, so, so, sorry, Thomas, like just, just to um, add to that, because first of all, you, you send out the emails first and then it's like total su suspense because you don't know if they're <laughs> going to respond. Because um, you already set, like uh, you already announced like, all right, uh, Dan and Dan is like the first episode, so you want to have their confirmations uh, well in advance. Um, and I think maybe that's like the millennial in me that you want like instant gratification, so that like the people, uh, so once you send out an email, you immediately get a response. Uh, but it took like I don't know, like uh, definitely you know, the first the first three days were like excruciating to me because like uh, there was we had one coming in another one and then so one per day and like oh shoot like if this is gonna keep up like this and then uh we'll we'll have a full roster like by the end of the show um so but luckily or fortunately uh, and then everything came in and then like like so so we did things parallel internally uh, i sent it uh, we have a facebook messenger chat uh so like what, what thomas said i just did these alarm bells and like all right uh this and this uh confirmed but we also what I also did is like do it on social media as well, um, um, Instagram and Facebook, 
I uh, guess confirmed um, Thomas Alfaguso or Ali Cascatalo, like all, all those people. So the people, like you come up with something new that nobody has seen before. Um, so you have to like, at least so some, at least as of what I felt, so, some credibility. Like I think you need to have some credible people on, on the show. So um, to get people excited about it, like you have to like, let them, all right, um, these people are going to be part of it. Otherwise, like you, your, your registration number will be like, no, uh, zero, zilt, you know? So um, building that suspense, um, or not, not building, that anticipation, uh, like you have to do it internally as well as, um, yeah, build, that, build the anticipation with the, um, with the public, with the people that are you know, going to watch. S sorry, I yeah, just wanted to uh, throw that in there. No, that's fine. Hoka, well, what were your feelings about the list and when the idea was gathered to the paper? Um, well, uh, to meet so many great leaders around the world, indigenous movement, for me, it was very uh, good experience uh, because many of them uh, I didn't know. So of then I, I met in some places, Andrea, I met in Kunayala. <laughs> uh, and the other chief I met in at the COP25. Uh, so of then I met there. But uh, I, I was very impressed and happy to listen then and uh, when I saw the, the list. Uh, for me, I think it was a, a good opportunity to listen close uh, because they have a lot of wisdom. Uh, and then I, I was very happy when the other guy it was very exciting because I know they are a good person. They are they are a very uh, a important person in the in the at the movement. And then I feel like uh, it's a, a, a good place to learn a lot, to listen then, and then I have the opportunity to, say, to ask some question. <laughs> it's, it's very crazy for me because sometimes it was, I didn't know they understand what I try to say in my broken English, <laughs> but uh, uh, they, they are very humble to listen and to understand. Um, and to try to connect to them. I, I think uh, when I watched the list, I, I was impressed how many, many uh, indigenous leaders they were working many years ago, uh, fighting in this movement and their passion and their wisdom and their uh, listen to each them and to be humble to learning for the others. I think that's very important because when we have our expertise together uh, and you could see the humble, I think that's more important how the smart of them. I think the importance of the values to indigenous people is to try to uh, relationship to integral of life. It's not only uh, we are talking in this uh, episode or we are talking in this a Congress, or we are talking in this uh, assembly, is more than this. Is how we can live our life every day. I, I thought to them in these episodes, uh, they are not only talking about uh, about some moment. They are talking about their life. And um, for me, when I saw and watched the list, and then I meet them, I can uh, test it a little about their life. And their and their their daily life. I think that's important for everyone to 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 learn about the example of the life in the daily life. I don't know is you understand what I try to say. Yeah. yeah, we 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 do, and I think that's a really a good point. Also, that this works as a capacity building, but also also kind of aspirational uh, grounds. Carson. What were your feelings? Well, how how was it to see your name on the list, and 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 uh, you were you know 
involved in a list that had many different uh, kind of capacities and individuals. So how, how did you feel? <clears throat> well, uh, the greatest thing was like, well, the first thing is when I looked at the list, I was like, hey, uh, because I, how did you do it? Your question took a silly service. But, so I was like, hey, how did you get all of these people? And I, I remembered that he has a huge experience and he's been good in diplomacy, has been speaking with people. And I remembered everything that you guys have been teaching us, right? by showing us what you've done, I was amazed. Um, but the greatest feeling of all was to know and to, to be honored and privileged to be part of uh, this team and being on the panelists again. And on top of that, coming in as a moderator. So this, this was a, a whole new level, uh, looking at the list, like less, um, less from Pacific. I look at uh, Andrea, these are big weeks in our movement. These are like, how can you even sit with them? <laughs> so uh, that was the, that was the feeling. That was the moment for me. And then I was I couldn't wait. Like I, I always wanted to be to be there. Like I couldn't wait to to, to start doing it with all of you. I started um, looking into how to do how to how to build the conversations, uh, we kept on reading and I mean, all the conversation, like so-and-so was confirmed. I even went private and asked uh, Gasale, um, hey, uh, why don't you have so-and-so here? And of course, he just mentioned that, of course, some people couldn't find time and we don't hold any grudge. Uh, we, we know that uh, we were doing this and there were some of our colleagues were doing something um, greater than greater for all of us like we are all like a branch like, like, i mean like for this this is like one branch um this is like a big tree the indigenous people's movement and so i accepted and said hey one day we're going to have all these people and then part of those people i'm not gonna mention appeared towards the last episode and i was like hey now we're good um and so that to me was emotional and knowing that uh, we can do anything we want. We can organize something big. We can organize a show online and we can let people know of our thoughts, of our struggles, of our strengths, of what our communities are doing. Most people even on this, uh, on this panel right now are doing uh, community-led uh, organizations. And, and so like we are a mix and we can do everything, anything we want to make sure that the indigenous people's movement is strong. And yeah, that was it. Um, I will learn part more as we go because most of my colleagues would like to say something as well. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you, because thank you, Karshan. Ghazali, interpretation. I felt in my my uh, thinking that wow, what kind of an opportunity to have discussions, uh, for example, with Pavel or people that are um, uh, speaking other languages that I haven't had usually the opportunity to listen to uh, beside of hearing their statements. And, and now uh, having the opportunity to, to listen uh, everybody with speaking with their own native or, or, or languages that, that, that they know well, um, how important was to get the interpretation in place and how did you do that? Well, could not have done this without interpretation. Like if, if um, I, w I even would say like, if there was no interpretation, then, then we would not have able, been able to do this um, because um, otherwise you only invite people that are speaking English and that would be um, not good for like the image of the movement or like solidarity of the movement. Um, you have indigenous people from Latin America um, Africa, um, uh, you know, um, Arctic, uh, Asia, like, like they all speak different languages. Russia as well, of course, you, you mentioned Pavel. Um, and, you know, if you want people to be able to talk informally, um, be very comfortable in front of a camera, um, at least give them the opportunity to talk in their own language, at least in their own, um, uh, not, not indigenous language, but in the language that they feel comfortable with. Um, 
so that's why we um like a reflex i and i think um uh, there's not enough gratitude that that i could convey to joseph for helping us out with this uh they were also aside from yourself uh drummy media tv Nihina, um those, those was the first one that i um that i sent an email to like all right hey guys this is what this is what's going on would love to have you be part of this um also because of your expertise in, in interpretation um it is it, it is it is very important you know um also with a webinar is is only is is what it what is it is it is nowadays it's like a one-off thing so like you do a webinar and then um people move on to the next webinar or like move on to their lives um the idea of this whole web of this of this series is is to uh, make it available in different languages post it on youtube so that people can refer back to it at, at some point like oh by the way if you're in russia and you want to learn from Les malazar about future proofing for example you can go to YouTube and then you can you can you can watch um, in Russian uh, what he meant with with, um, uh, with future proofing, for example. At least that's that's the whole idea behind it. We're not we're not that far yet, um, uh, but that that's that's uh, what ideally what uh, we will um, develop in uh, in the, yeah, soon hopefully. Um, so uh, so what we did is like yeah, reaching out to to to. Those tips are document, documentation center for indigenous peoples, um, based out of Geneva as well. Worked, they have been in the movement for, uh, for 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 very long, almost as long as the movement is, is alive, actually. Um, so it was kind of natural to me uh, to reach out to them, and they were. Uh, we had we had some conference calls. Uh, what's going on? Uh, what do you expect from us? What can, how can we help each other? And. Um, and then, of course, the day been able to reach um, to get the interpreters, and then these interpreters, like they do all this, and I cannot emphasize this enough that the people think they all get paid, but these are like yeah. voluntary interpreters. Um, you know, so they do this, like they make take time out of their own out of their own day um, for two two and a half, some even sometimes even three hours. Some of the episodes were three hours. Um, yeah, and then do in pairs, you know, and it's. It, um, if you think that listening to a, a guest it can, can sometimes be very um, challenging, um, imagine how an interpreter needs to be needs to, needs to listen. Like they listen differently and that's all has to translate it almost instantaneously. Um, so uh, um, very, very grateful for, 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 for that work. And then then, then you get to get to see like how they respond, like the, the interpreters respond to the, to the, um, to the whole webinar show. Because I would, I, I expected for them to be like, all right, yeah, did it, all right, next week, sure, why not? Um, but all of them, like they, they did at least four episodes, because they were so interested. They they they, they loved the whole um, the concept. Like uh, they, they learned it as, as well. And they even like, like I saw LinkedIn posts from these interpreters, like tweet uh, tw uh, tweets that they sent out, like, oh, this is amazing. And some of them even sent out a tweet yesterday, like, um, oh, shoot, this is like the final episode. Um, hopefully I can, I can, I can get emails as well. I, hopefully I can be of help you out next time as well. So very, 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 very important, uh, interpretation. Um, I wish like, yeah, that we could do it like in every meeting. So also like we also use up like a day before the episode, we have our catch up, like, like dry run meetings that we should could do it in inter with, Interpretation as well, because Hoki and 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 Ini and Tomo's learning Spanish right now, uh, you know. So, um, yeah, that we could that um, people can people feel more comfortable in speaking in their own language, and um, yeah, like for me, for example, like English is my like my fifth language, uh, but like for others, it's like listening to English is like they open, some some people might able might be able to listen to understand every fifth word. Um, so, um, yeah, I think this is actually like a very rhetorical question, question actually, that is like, um, yeah, interpretation that it, it is very important. And what kind of feedback? Any, any webinar you get? Uh, interpreters, guests, um, oh, guests oh. really, really appreciated it. Um, it is, um, mostly, unfortunately, um, and I think 
in emails, I also made it a point that uh, we are arranging interpretation. Like, so when inviting the guests, we are arranging interpretation for you. Um, so that could, um, so that they don't feel like um, being left out. Because if you do a, a, a um, webinar in English only, um, yeah, the, the people can be very hesitant, hesitant, you know, like, like that, um, that they might want to say something, but they won't because um, they don't know the right words for it. Um, so um, the feedback that I, that I received back were, were, were um, from a guest, um, very positive. People that w were watching it as well, even for, like um, the, so the last week's episode was we also had the opportunity of interpretation into Chinese, you know, and that, that was amazing. So that we could also reach out to Indonesian peoples in Taiwan uh, and, and Chinese speaking people. So, um, and I was very much appreciated by, by people and, um, and inter so like everyone I have, and I ask, um, or maybe I should start with that as well. After, after almost not after every episode, Send on an email to to all the interpreters. All right, um, any feedback? How can we make your lives easier uh, next time around? Um, so, yeah, because we only listen to them, but we also have really have to listen to them by by making their lives easier. So feedback was pretty, pretty um, yeah, very good. At, at least well, what I what I've received. Good, Hoka. How, how did you see the interpretation, the meaning of it, and 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 so on. Pues si no hubiera interpretación, no entendieran. <laughs> It's exactly. like that, yes. It's, we don't have some inter interpretation. <laughs> Many of people don't understand. And then for me, it was great to listen in Spanish, <laughs> all things, because when sometimes I was talking, I was talking in English, but I was all listen in Spanish <laughs> uh, because it's better to follow what uh, uh, people say. And then I think it's very, very important to connect with the language we talk and to understand better what uh, the people say. I know I need to trust to them. They are <laughs> telling what the others say, but I know they are, we can trust uh, to them because um, Uh, they want to communicate very uh, close to the what the other what the other people say. I that I think is that's important. And then the other thing is because uh, we, we can feel free and we can talk uh, what we try to say. Uh, I think that uh, it's very very important in this kind of meeting meaning uh, meeting. Sorry, uh, because is it is very important to include different person around the world and um, we have many languages <laughs> you know and and that's very important i think we we continue grow and to for to dream one day maybe we have a indigenous language interpretation like kuna <laughs> or other language uh, we because we have many many kuna people very interesting in that and the majority of the kuna living uh, at the city have Uh, the youth people, uh, we speak uh, Spanish too, uh, and Kuna language, that's uh, good, but uh, I think it's important interpretation to to continue to do that, and then maybe include in some uh, other things, some indigenous language. Uh, if we have some people can help, uh, uh, I think in, in some uh, nation we, we could do that. Uh, finally, uh, uh, it was great to listen uh, all of them. Like uh, when I was listening to the other, what try to what they try to say, and then when they are talk like uh, in Russian or uh, or other other language, like uh, some of the leaders, they were talking in their language. Uh, and then it's very nice to hear them in their language and then to listen the interpretation. Uh, one day I was very confused because I was listening, what language they talking? And then I, I, I figured out they, maybe it's, I think it's Russian, I don't know. Uh, 
I was thinking, <laughs> what language is that? <laughs> because I was listening my Spanish uh, interpretation and then, uh, and then I changed to the channel <laughs> to mm -hmm. to know what happened in other in other languages. To be curious, <laughs> one moment uh, to uh, move to French and Russian and and English. But I think it, it, it's great the job and want to say thank you to the, all the translate, translators because uh, they, they were very important in, in, the, in this time. And for me, it was great because I understand some of them better than others for the accent. And some speak very fast. And then when I listen in Spanish, it's better. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely important. Um, Gisali, to find a solution, how to technically <laughs> make it happen. Hello, Jocelyn. Uh, how, how did you, uh, you know, I know that people are struggling currently on making these solutions. Uh, people are uh, trying to find technical solutions on how they can uh, do the interpretation um, uh, in many different languages. I know that we in my parliament also are currently trying to find a solution how to how to um, do these meetings where you cannot be present in the same room. The technical solutions mm -hmm. available and, and to be known aren't that easy. So how, uh, how you came up with the technical solution and what did you use? Um, well, of course, like you have to do some research and um, I'm very great that that the team, the creative team, is complete now. Jocelyn uh, is finally uh, arrived home from work. I, 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 I assume not. A, no, no, not work. Dinner probably. Um, so, like this is this is the entire creative team. Um, in terms of yeah, interpretation platforms. Uh, tea time. We used uh, this platform, Streamyard, uh, because it is um, yeah. I think interpretation using the platforms, the, the only thing that you think about is trying, trying to eliminate friction, is trying to make it very easy for people to follow everything. Um, so we use street time, um, StreamYard uh, for tea time, um, but then like if you wanna use interpretation, street, StreamYard does not do that. Um, so obviously you try to look at Microsoft Teams, uh, uh, WebEx, all, and, and eventually we, uh, yeah, we got into Zoom um which has its challenges as well uh, ideally i would have liked to have like the interpretation feature of zoom in streamyard but like streamyard doesn't do that yet um with that google hangouts doesn't work with that either um so i invested uh, like a lot of my money actually to um in uh in in buying or yeah yeah a subscription of the uh webinar feature for um uh, in zoom because uh, you, you have a free version and then you go to, go to paid professional and then you have to add on the, the web webinar uh, function uh, feature, sorry. And so yeah, the, in terms of technicalities, like, so you, you have to do that and then uh, like, and then like reach out to DOSIP, all right, like we have this package, um, we have uh, you, um, DOSIP only do, does uh, um, English into French, Spanish, uh, and Russian and vice versa. Um, so you wait for for them to for DOSIP to um, yeah, provide you with the with the the interpreters list because, um, um, like I said, they're all volunteers, so they have to say when they're whether they are available or not. And so usually, if if the if the meeting is on Friday, I usually get uh, a list uh, on on Wednesday. So then I send them the uh, facilitator's brief, so a rundown of, of the of the um, of the episode, and then I go into the back end of Zoom and I, I add them um, as interpreters to the um, to the yeah to, to the webinar, and then send an email again to all the interpreters. All right, hey guys, welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, how how are you doing? And um, also yeah, I have to confirm that they have been received the confirmation email. Send them the facilitators brief, and so th th those are. There's a lot of technicalities. Um, this, this whole, like if the webinar is only for two hours on Friday, it takes me at least a week 
to to prepare things uh, for those two hours. I don't know. Is it, does that answer your question? By the way, I'm yeah, it, sure it, it, yeah. It, it, it does. It does. It does. Well, before we go to the um, discussion on, on 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 how did you identify it and where the shared is, what were the platforms? Uh, as everybody can see, we have Jocelyn here now. And now I can have the privilege to focus on Jocelyn only for 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 a couple of minutes. So we've been discussing about the pre-sessional um, aspects of the work, what were happening behind the scenes. So how did you feel when Ghazali approached you? to join this group and how the, the pre-work that was done uh, before the actual episodes were starting to happen felt. Okay. Hi, people. <laughs> well, I have to, first I have to admit that I'm like the free writer of the team because I really didn't do much, but uh, I, I'm really honored that- Shut up. <laughs> 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 because you know, Ghazali, well, that's why I was saying that I I was really late in replying emails or replying messages and all this stuff. But I'm very thankful that Ghazali, he never quit. He just keep <laughs> sending me messages <laughs> and remind me that I, I'm not going to get away from this. But I think that's that's something I really appreciate because um, well, I talked to Ghazali, I think that was two months or three months ago when I first, I, I changed my job. Now I'm not in media anymore. I'm not in politics. And that was the time I just got in the, I just got in the work, the actual battlefield of, uh, of politics in Taiwan. And I was really frustrated. Well, even now I'm also still frustrated, but um, I, I, I think the this whole thing, this webinar or working, or, well, for me, I'm not really working that much. I'm sorry, but yeah. <laughs> but following with all the discussions with the team and all these things, you know, it just remind me a lot of how how it was when we were in the United Nations, how it was when we were negotiating, you know, with different people and the passion we had and the, the dream, the ideal we had at that time. And uh, now listening to all these different people sharing their stories, their experiences, it's just really like uh, to, to again, to, it's like a confirmation for myself, you know, like to, tell, to, to again, tell myself that it's still there. It's still something these people that I've been working with or I've, I've known for more than 10 years as friends, as partners, as, I don't know, partners in crimes. <laughs> and we are still on this same path. It's just sometimes we go to different, um, uh, we try different kinds of route, but this direction is still the same. So I'm very glad that with this webinar series, I get to reconnect with the people that we used to work together and also I get to know some more people. And I think that's that's something that we we really um, use this time very good because, you know, in the, as I mentioned several times that in the past, in the United Nations, it's sometimes too intense, intense and it's just too much to think about. We cannot really be friends or we cannot really be ourselves to be to speak so honestly or to to really spill everything out but because of this time because it's online and we have this kind of distance in a way but i would say after listening to different episodes of the webinar i would say people are more honest and that surprised me and yes. i think that's why it's very it's a very precious uh, thing that this whole team is trying to do that we have all this honest sharing and you know like people are not trying to hide any kind of wisdoms or tricks they have they are just really telling us the secrets or the the the, the secret skills they have when they are in the negotiation so I really appreciate that that's good to hear um when the uh, list was confirmed of, of invited guests, uh, how did you uh, see the list and did, you, did it 
surprise you or uh, uh, how did you think about the whole guests that were confirmed for the episodes? I was, um, well, first, of course, I was surprised because you, as you, like, as the others already mentioned, that we see all these people who are like, well, like the people I've seen for, for 10 years, but I've never really like talk, talk to them. Of course, sometimes we have some exchange or something, but not really like talking. <laughs> but then they, they, they are also joining the show. So I was telling my, uh, my friends in Taiwan, because you know, the situation in Taiwan, I was telling them that they should really try to get online and listen to these people because they are like the Wikipedia of the international indigenous movement. And they just know a lot of things. And it's it's very rare that we can, you know, just sit there for two hours and then we listen to all these experiences and also knowledges that they compile for more than 20 years, 30 years. So I, I, I was telling my friends that it's like a textbook opportunity that we should really, you know, get our time and sit down and listen to these people. So in one way, very excited. And the other way, I'm very, again, I, I, I was really appreciated to all these people who were sharing. And of course, like the, the effort that Gonzali and everyone here in the team, they were putting in the invite, invitation. Good. So Gazali, you were able to identify Zoom with the group as a tool. Um, but that was maybe the first step you had in uh, kind of a reasoning that the interpretation will work there. But how did you came up with the group ideas on where do you share the live feeds? Well, what were the platforms? Um, well, unfortunately, well, the, um, the only platform that Zoom can um, share the live feed to is either uh, Facebook or YouTube. Um, so I knew that there's a lot of, and then you make, you make the de decision. Um, you have a lot more people active as these people active on Facebook than on YouTube and you want interaction. So, the, so, um, the first decision was I made was, all right, um, we'll do zoom and then we'll, uh, simultaneously, uh, share the live feed, uh, to Facebook and not to YouTube. Um, this one, for example, is different um, because I you have the feature to 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 do it to Facebook and Twitter and and, and many more. Um, I, th I think it's, it's very important that that, um, that you you Zoom still feels like um, like a, 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 in a closed room. Uh, you have to register, and only people that are registered they they can participate and. I use I see Zoom a, a, as a platform, but not as a as like everyone has to go to Zoom um, so that um, it it is it is ours, it is mine. You know that, that, that that's not the whole idea for this whole webinar series. Um, the webinar series is it's to open the whole conversation, right? To to um, let people know who Jocelyn is, who Carson is, who Ini is, Melanie, and everyone everyone else, um, so that the the movement can get to know one another. Um, Usually, we should be able to do that uh, in New York, Geneva, or wherever. Um, but um, yeah, now we have to do it like virtually. Um, so yeah, this Zoom as a platform, out of necessity, um, out of also out of like um, uh, how, how should I say it? Um, practicality. It's easy for people to use. People are used to Zoom. If I would choose, I don't know, Slack or or. Microsoft Teams, WebEx, a lot of people are not very used to it. So those are considerations that you have to make. Um, like what are people used to, um, used to working with? All right, Zoom, all right, let's go to Zoom. Um, and, and then try to amplify that, let, um, amplify that feed as much as possible. Um, so that's why we, we live stream it directly to, to Facebook um, so that for the interaction part uh, and also like, to um, yeah, upload it to YouTube afterwards, um, so that um, it does not stay like most webinars right now. And that, that, that's still, I see that as a problem uh, for the movement. Uh, most webinars right now, um, they're standalone. They, 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 people have the chats and everything else, and after that, it's gone. Like there's, there's no, 
archived. There's no registration of it. Uh, and I would like to see that more um, of for indigenous peoples um, on online, on YouTube. As And like Jocelyn said, it's a Wikipedia uh, for the indigenous movement. I like to see this as, as a buffet of knowledge for indigenous people. So you can just pick and choose. All right, now I want to listen to Jocelyn. Then I want to listen to um, Les Malazer. Then I want to listen to uh, Ruka from, from Indonesia. Like, like it, it, should, it should be able that way, it should be that way, um, uh, that you can tap into their knowledge, even though it's for 10 to 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but it is very important um, that people, um, yeah, really, really can relate to those uh, to to the to the guests of the of the of the of the webinar series, and so that's why I make uh, we made the I'm also yeah that decision of um, Zoom live stream and repurpose repurposing it for the um, yeah the the uh, media channels uh, that we have uh, at our disposal and then TV and Disney now like um, we also talk a lot with the TV uh, well I appeared and at four a.m. in the morning at at, at some point. And uh, um, on TV, TV in Dehina, um, trying to speak Spanglish, um, still suck that I, I, I'm not very um, fluent in, in Spanish. But it is, um, yeah, and very important that that um, yeah, you try to you try to reach as much pe many people as possible for for the whole webinar series. That's very true. Ini, what did you feel about how successful we were? Uh, on on the technical solutions and spreading the 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 episodes and the messages throughout the social media and and and, and so on. Uh, yes, when is as uh, Gasali was was saying and everything, how most of the webinars, or I can say over here, they follow it from Facebook. You can make a uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom webinar, yeah, and but not a lot of people are going there. Yeah? But outside, they choose just to listen. They do another thing while they are listening. Yeah? And also, that's why over here, a lot of how I said at the beginning, people use uh, Facebook instead of other platforms. Yeah? But also, uh, most of the things uh, is that they, I think they were thinking more about it's going to be all in English. But yeah, and it is uh, quite challenging for people like in Latin America, uh, also the, the time. Yeah, but I think we, we had a really huge uh, guest from Pacific, from Europe, and it was the right time at 7 a.m. Yeah, but yes, um, from TV Indígena, uh, we got a lot of uh, people watching, even that is in English, it did come out, I uh, strike from Zoom to Facebook. So even like that, uh, a lot of people follow us and because actually the second country that follows the Indigena is the United States. So there are a lot of people watching us from the United States. And so, yeah, combining everything and for us, for the Indigena, having you having this is important. Uh, one, from the Indigena point of view, that we need uh, uh, more activities. It's, it's something in English, it's even better. And then a lot of people can also not non-Spanish speakers they can follow. Yeah. It's kind of a context also. So uh, that point it is really amazing. Also sharing a bit from Instagram and everything. But if we, if I had learned a little bit earlier about the use of the OBS, we could be like. Uh, showing also our like zoom activity on uh instagram and other like uh, platforms that would be like but but actually it was really amazing uh casali and the team they made a uh, great work and tomo checking uh twitter uh and other like platforms at the same time when we are like live 
and that's amazing so that's what this the only thing that i can add thank you thank you melanie trumpet media how do you think that we were successful with the platforms using zoom zoom and you know announcing trying to market the 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 episodes in social media yeah no i think that was exactly one of the exciting thing building also the anticipation uh, like uh, gazal is a master of that <laughs> and uh, and like uh, for instance like now uh, i think there we all know there's this need of the movement or the international indigenous movement also using the new media much better no and it's something that's very close to my own heart actually uh, of course i have more the angle always of visual media with drumbeat media and uh, we are like uh, drum media is is always on facebook or me myself i've always been on facebook connecting with everybody of because uh, uh, yeah i'm lucky to know a lot of you guys uh, from before having making new friends also via the the social media platforms in general so uh, there we always had a tradition of being much more present at fa uh, on facebook uh, as a movement probably exactly because it had in the old days at least a little bit this uh we are there as people like uh jocelyn also said very much no like uh, that came out in the episodes people were actually really showing uh, how they were as persons and i think that's something that's very essential for for the movement or for for the different uh, indigenous representatives when we're here at the un that we all like we really also are there with our human side uh compared to maybe governments or so so we always had this tradition of uh, being active on, on facebook and uh, but yeah i mean like using all the other platforms and the new more modern young kind of uh, so for me it was also like a learning experience now of how could we actually maybe also use TikTok or like of course get much more also involved on instagram so and i like this idea that we've really tried to spread out but also with uh, the emphasis that Ghazali says of, of actually having something visual left there for afterwards for people to return to since we want to also, yeah, exactly with the time zones. Not everybody can see us live, even if they've heard about that we're going to do the events or the episodes, but that we know that they are there, the videos, uh, that where Carson did a huge job, right, on, on editing um, so that we could have this thing forever, you know, kind of thing that people can refer to. And I think we succeeded very well on that. Uh, we were not only about getting a lot of live views when we were having the episodes, but also exactly of, um, of this thing being there for afterwards. And uh, for me, personally speaking, when I saw that uh, Columbia University, their human rights program had posted it um, and made the link to to all the videos and everything then for me it's like yeah we we did succeed no like uh, in, in some of the emphasis uh, like some of the ideas we had so so that i think that was i i'm amazed no how well we could um, pull that off good carson how did you feel that we were successful you were doing a lot of the work a lot of the fine well done videos in youtube have been have been edited by you so how did you feel that we were able to be successful on announcing the episodes and choosing the platforms and and, and making the technical solutions and and, and edits in, in different forums for us well uh, when I found out first that we were going to live stream on Facebook and probably also sometimes to live stream as well on YouTube, I knew that we were going to have a great impact. And I remember uh, during the first, one of the first episodes, could have been first, second, or third, I can't remember really, and we were almost uh, half, uh, like one hour into the discussion and then we had like a thousand views online and, and that that was the moment uh, that was the moment that we felt the impact of live transmission as well as having 
I mean, having YouTube now thereafter to have the cuts that we've done, segments. Uh, so, for example, uh, of course, uh, for us here, we know as a techn technical team. But of course, we, the segments were about an intervention from a panelist. If, for example, we had uh, less uh, speaking for the first 15 minutes, uh, for each 15 minute segment, so we cut that and, and repurpose it to Gomaliku uh, YouTube channel. And uh, so far, so good. So many references have been going there. And the other platforms that came in that were not part of uh, the choice, and it gave us reviews. For, we, usually, we usually receive uh, comments from LinkedIn, uh, our, pro, our personal products in LinkedIn, uh, of course, uh, Instagram, I mean, yes, Twitter. Personally, I've got some reviews. I've been able to refer them to Gasali. And so I would say the digital, the use of, uh, of this social media in this time and age uh, for um, indigenous people's diplomacy has been amazing. And, and we, we literally share, uh, um, I mean, we literally hit the glass ceiling because this was something that has, had never been done before. Uh, and, and, and we took the exploits and, and, and received great results. And so I would say just like moving forward, let's explore, let's be creative. Uh, I hush that we get more, I mean, like I hush more creatives from uh, the indigenous people's movement and our allies to come on board and recreate these moments because right now we have a lot to unpack. Um, how many, like, like we had over 60, 60 guests and so those are segments so with now that we need to unpack and share with the people uh, with all these questions that we had and so uh, yeah that, that, that to me it was a huge success. Um, yeah, it's only the only challenge is we we were the same people running the show. We never had like um, live in um, audience. The people, I mean, like we had the audience, but we never had people to reply to comments coming in live. Uh, those are things that are coming up now. If we are going to do something else uh, in the near future, but yeah. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. Um, to no good, Kazali. Um. You were able to choose the platforms with the group, make the interpretation work, use Zoom as a, as a basic platform. Um, there has been some criticism over Zoom that it doesn't uh, have the all necessary um, technical security issues in place. Although I have understood that they have been uh, recently uh, strength and, 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 and gotten stronger in Zoom. Did you did you think about that aspect? One hundred percent, because this days before we we launched the first episode, like the whole thing with Zoom uh, became public, like the, the security issues, and yeah, like I, I I remember that we had a conversation as a as a team, like all right, what's what's going on, like like um, what should we do, and and all that, and I. And you mentioned it, and 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 Jocelyn uh, can probably talk about it as well. Is that, that Zoom is not always always available uh, or um, approachable? Or how, how do you say like can be can be reached um, in in all parts of the world? Um, so that that was, that was the the um, why we still stuck with Zoom is because uh, yeah, the invitation was already sent out. Um, to like to to everybody, everybody was already like um, yeah focusing on Zoom uh, and since the guests and and uh, and interpreters as well and the other other platforms have did not have a um, interpretation feature or uh, were more much more cumbersome to deal with. Um, not everyone can go on Microsoft Teams, for example. Um, Google doesn't have a, a um, an interpretation feature. So that really like slims down like um, your options because you want to provide the the best experience for indigenous peoples uh, from end to end. Um, so um, 
luck, luckily they increased or they, they, they did something about the security. Um, but yeah, then again, like it is, yeah, it, it's, it's been going on in my mind actually throughout the, the, the series that a lot of people had, had issues getting on, um, uh, getting on, on the show or watching the show or um, issues like uh, philosophically, of course, with, with the, with, with the um, because of the security thing. Um, uh, um, yeah, because if, if, if there was an other platform, I would, I would use it in a, use it in a heartbeat. Um, because, but, um, yeah, maybe for example, um, well, we already gave, gave people a heads up anyway. Um, like for the follow up, like for the next, uh, yeah, for the next thing, like, yeah, we, I would definitely reconsider, like, we'll, like, think about like, what is the best platform to use? Um, making sure that while maintaining all the features like interpretation and, and, and Q and A and, and and stuff. Good. Good. So now uh, we have we have discussed um, the prepare the uh, how the planning was done, uh, what kind of goal was set in the group. So let me take all of you to the days before the first episode was going to be happening. So well, how how was the group? What where were you? What were you doing, Ghazali? Let's start for, from you. How scared did you shitless? prepare to the shows? I was scared shitless. Um, because because like the first like the um all episodes were amazing, but like it all depends on the first episode, like the how people receive it. Um, so. I was like, like the questions, like are they the right questions? Are they easy enough? So you, you're dealing with you dealing with a lot of the questions for the for the guests, making sure that the guests understand what the format is. Uh, you're dealing with uh, pro, um, building up that anticipation. So you're working on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, um, all the all the, all these platforms. Um, you're dealing with. Um, yeah, a lot of people that are on the first episode, um, but not responding until like what the two days in or like two days out, or until the very last moment that you're like, oh, boom, you see, you see that that um, that light, uh, that image pop up, and that they they made it into the Zoom uh, session. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that you're going through. There's like like a, a million things that are going at least go that went through my head. Um, cause you want to make the, the first episode, um, as, 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 as good as possible. And then like the barometer, um, for it, um, was of course like the registrations, I mean, like you, 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 you do, uh, emails, uh, you do social media, you, you, you drive them to a certain point, either the, the link tree or you do directly direct registration. And then, yeah, you, like you see that number of registrations increase very slowly and so you're like oh shit like maybe i should do more so um so you, you throw out other things as well um now i'm like i'm not so worried anymore not about about numbers and and and, and all those things um mostly because it is more like the measurement for success i think for this webinar series is not about the number of people that are watching right now but the number of people that can refer back to a the segments on YouTube, because um, because we're looking we're look this webinar is not for the the spirit of the moment, but it is more for the spirit of the movement, um, so that they can yeah they can um, refer back to people um, to to certain people like if they want to listen to Jocelyn about her issue uh, issues in Taiwan how she sees it, they can look look it up on YouTube so. Um, so yeah, so so that that was um, uh, what went through my head at least um, uh, one week, uh, before, like the, the days before the first episode. Good, yeah. Tomo. Preparing the show, the first one is upcoming. What what are what were your feelings? Well, um, I don't think I was worried about the numbers either because I think the I kind of considered that. Uh, the result might kind of appear itself maybe one or two years time when, when we get to finally check how many people watched 
the, the segments of, of the shows on Facebook, YouTube. So, so for me, it's like numbers is kind of like a long term game, uh, and we can. I think there's still space for for this platform to 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 really promote the materials that that the contents that 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 has been created. Um, but I guess leading up the show, I was really really worried about time. Time was like my first um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Because you know we, we had a strict schedule, but nothing ever goes according to plan. If you've spoken to Ghazali uh, <laughs> for for extended period of time, uh, and I know that you know a real uh, conversations about you know philosophical uh, life aspects of indigenous leaders. I mean, these things take time, um, even to scratch the surface, uh, if there was if that's even possible. Um, so um, knowing you know. And this is this is with full respect to Ghazali, um, knowing how 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 he converses and how uh, how um, things can get really really deep. Um, uh, I was really afraid of uh, going over the time, and we, we really reminded ourselves that that we have time schedule to keep. Uh, uh, and and I think, but the, the, th the thing is that people understand. I think people generally understood that that in in a time like this, uh, where conversations are going to be informal, uh, everybody's going to talk very candidly. Uh, I think, you know, everybody, even the panelists themselves really understand, like, okay, you know, it could take a while um, for, for some, uh, and we've all known some people will quite perhaps go over time, but, you know, but the content nonetheless were still very good. So um, I, think, I think my worry was really over kind of, uh, how do you put it? Uh, I, I, I overestimated the concerns of time and underestimated the content, so to say. What came out from it uh, was, was very, very uh, worthwhile, even if it went over time. Um, but uh, leading up to it, um, well, you know, I, I, other than time, I really don't have a clear memory of, you know, how, uh, what was going through my mind, which is kind of indicative of the fact that that it wasn't for me. It was not really. There wasn't really a issue uh, to 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 uh, to think about. Uh, just that uh, I was, you know, more or less looking forward to 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 see familiar faces um, uh, and and maybe uh, uh, hear some of the stories that I've heard before, but uh, but shared, shared in a way that is uh, uh, compact, uh, but also um, uh, provides us with further. Uh, avenues for discussions uh, later so um yeah i i was uh, I, I was quite comfortable uh, and I, I knew that uh, that given the list of, given the number amount of people who responded i felt like you know this is this is gonna be this is gonna be big uh, and i know that the a session uh, will happen and uh, no matter what the <laughs> of course the first one is very important but no matter what the success is going to be i think there are a lot of business people who are ready to share their experiences, share their life. I've been waiting for this moment, uh, and and, uh, and it, it was for me as well. I was really waiting for this moment, and and, and once it started, I was you know <laughs> just trying to make sure that okay, guess I stay on time, stay on time. That's that, that's basically all I was screaming at, at the back good, of my head. Good, Melanie. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about preparing to the first episode? Yeah, no, that was, uh, we were also super excited, right? Because we had been building it up over so long time. And uh, for me, it was really also this technical thing of, of the challenge, like if people can connect because, you know, the internet connection doesn't always function. Um, like uh, whatever continent uh, you sit on. Uh, I also faced myself problems once. Uh, I was actually heading to Denmark and I was supposed to have maybe been uh, moderating in the beginning so i was even more excited <laughs> about taking on that role as well and then because then you're faced there live you know with the technical issues and so on so yeah it was uh, stressed on the behalf of all of these issues and even if i wasn't going to be be the one doing it because yeah i also like so so wherever you sit in the world right like uh, it's not always evident to be connected so um no, it was uh, super exciting. I knew we had support from a lot of people and that there were going to be a lot of people following. So I wasn't really worried on that or that. And I knew that uh, the guests would probably be there and so on. So uh, so it was really all this about, yeah, how to pull it off. And in two hours, not like uh, like Tomo says this thing, like, how can you limit it? 
I've been filming um, several times when uh, Ghazali has been doing interviews, like his podcasts. So, and I also I've been interviewing a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of the people that were on the show. I had already had the pleasure to interview them before. So I also know how you actually really to, a lot of the people are very good at speaking and speaking long. And uh, so how do you actually get this gold out in 15 minutes? That was my main concern. No? Like, how can we really get, uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, how can you dig in there within such a short, um, so yeah, that was my concern, no? that uh, how to be spot on. That's good, 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 good thoughts. Ini, you were preparing to be the moderator in the first show. So, so what kind of feelings do you have for the first show, the, the preparing of actually, you know, uh, exercising the, the plan that you ha all have been planning for, for many months? Oh, it was <laughs> actually when um, uh, Tomo and Melanie was the kid, I was thinking, trying to, uh, like, to bring all the moments and yeah but i remember the day the day that i was really nervous because i was the first one <laughs> with uh, sally i'm like oh my gosh uh, i i hope that i had another like i had the second episode at least to watch how is like how does it work at the beginning uh, so the opportunity to hey i can improve that way i can practice so and the other thing also is um, my English. I'm not that 100% speaking like English speaker, but I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I'm a full, totally nervous and sweating over here. <laughs> uh, but the best part of everything, Thomas, is at the end, I don't know, is Melanie and Tomo can say that. Uh, Zika's and Castle Mother, we made a video call. And you would see Gasali. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we have <laughs> a kind of beer. And he was sitting literally on the floor because he was like, <gasps> finally did it. Oh man, it was amazing because, as uh, my friends said, that it was kind of that we would like to make it perfect. We wanted. Yeah, and especially because we are, we were having a special guest, an international special guest, special guest. So it was really well all nervous and everything to to see things happening perfectly. But yeah, that day, wow, that, that's why actually I said okay, I think I can close it. I started. Let me close it. Let me check how does the round table work. <laughs> <laughs> Good, <laughs> good, it. good. Hoka, how did you uh, think about of you know going to the, the, the actual episodes and 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 starting to do those? Well, uh, I really was enjoying this time <laughs> uh, because uh, I, I think. I need to, to talk in English and then uh, I feel like uh, maybe they don't understand what I try to say, but I do, <laughs> I did. <laughs> and then uh, I love to do the question to the uh, sister from Peru, indigenous woman from Peru, uh, because I want to know more about what she thinks about interculture and about uh, in their country, how uh, to understand the the importance of the interculture in the political situation in our context, and then I think it was great to to try to to talk in English and Spanish at the, at the same time, and then uh, to listen then and to have some question prepared, but other not because I think it's very fluent too, very, we, in some moment we can be very spontaneous, uh, and all the time, but I, I think when we do have some question 
prepared, but other questions we are thinking because we are talking with them in the in the in the real time. And then for me it was great because is to follow them what they say. And yes, a little nervous, I think so. Really, I don't think a lot of that because I think a lot of that I didn't do that because uh, I don't like, well, no, I speak a little English, less than any. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it was like, uh, okay, I need to, to just jump in or to go to swimming. I don't know how you say that when you go to the pool and just <laughs> jump into the, yeah. to the pool <laughs> and to do that and to see what happened. Uh, uh, in other way, it's amazing to have a team because I know back us, us in front, stay others, friends, support us. And then maybe if we didn't see something, they chat, uh, and then we, we can see what happened. It's not really like a, we alone in front, uh, we, a lot of us friends is back to them, to the screen. Uh, I love to to be part and to include, to be include and to try to understand better uh, the realities of the indigenous movement around the world. And when we are finished, I feel better. I think so because <laughs> we we did, and and we and some of friends from other countries they asked me, they are not really follow this our movement the, from other organizations, you know, indigenous people has many organizations in different topics, but some of my friends from other organizations, they ask me, ah, I want to listen, uh, uh, I want to know more about that. I have many friends from other organizations and they, they want to know more, I think that's important to include other persons in other platforms like artists, like, Theologians, you know, theologians, people, indigenous theologians, we, we have many friends in this way and they, they want to know more about that, or artists, people, or people in other movement. I think that's amazing to, to, to connect different kinds of person and different kinds of uh, movement, indigenous movement in other ways. Um, but for me, it was great. And thank you, Gasali, for inviting me and to be part of that and the, the team. Good, and as this is a slow jam, you know, two hours of already being gone, <laughs> gone over. So, so, so we will use the indigenous time thinking, and we will just continue. Carson, you were part of the planning process. You are going to be part of the first episode. How were your feelings? Well. Since I was a, I was a panelist and being part of the planning team, uh, the anxiety, the excite, let me not call it anxiety, just anxiousness <laughs> and the excitement, um, the anxious, the, the anxiety that I had was about my internet connection. I was also apprehensive uh, about my laptop's performance, and but hey, it went well. <laughs> Uh, the internet connection as well. And uh, because of my background in information and communication technology stuff, tech stuff, I knew, I knew what to do to tweak uh, those uh, small challenges and to make it great. So we made it. And so uh, uh, the, the challenge related to first episode and the second one was when after doing all that, uh, and I, I really wanted to do the cuts and to do the video edits and all that. I just, it wasn't just about the cuts and edits. And my laptop just crashed. I remember just telling, I actually stayed for over two days without telling Gasali that, hey, my laptop has just failed me and I don't know what to do. I, don't, I didn't want to fail this team. And um, well, I went to a computer tech guy and fixed my laptop and we were back on business. <laughs> so first episode was learning. And it's also important to mention that uh, I had 15 minutes and I, I wanted to be excellent because I saw the, the co-panelists were people who were experienced and I was the kid in the, in, the, in the whole park. And I needed to make sure that my intervention was not clouded, was not clouded by 
my my youthfulness. So I rehearsed and, and wrote my my thoughts. I remember sharing with Ghazali. <laughs> Ghazali has been a great teacher to me. I know he, he looked at it. He just told me like, ah, I I just treat it like it's good. Just I don't want to edit anything, but it looks great. And that was the moment I needed to be told something like that because for me it was the first time. It was like going. I took it like being in the UN uh, more than a GA more sort of uh, intervention. I needed to make sure that the thoughts were well planned, uh, the, the sentences were complete, coherency and all that. Even though Ghazali was saying that it was uh, a moment to just say, like, talk with the way you want, like, uh, let it be easy. But of course, for me, I wanted to set some standards for myself to be able to uh, to be the kind of diplomat for the indigenous people's movement that I want to be. I, uh, I'm so glad once again that uh, you, Thomas and Kasali and Drumbit Media thought that I would be part of this team. Uh, it's still unreal. I mean, it's unreal that I'm part of this. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good. And oh, it's been a pleasure to have you. And, and you have had any, and all of, of, of course, all of you have had a great great impact and a really an important role in the in, in, in this endeavor so let me take preparing to the first show you have started the show what were the highlights of the first show what was happening behind the scenes did you have any kind of uh, um, little uh, dilemma there ongoing uh, that you were fixing uh, when the episode was on live? And also, what kind of uh, memories do you have? Do you have any specific code from any of the guests or or uh, memories that um, uh, you were touched uh, in some some way from the first episode, Ghazali? Ever see um, a duck on a pond? You know, like so, like on the surface, like there's nothing going on, but uh, like, but like, its legs though, like it, it's sort of swimming like crazy. So, like on the surface, you probably have not seen anything, but like in the back end, because we were chatting, like uh, we were keeping a like open um, chat with the whole team. If there's anything that surfaces uh, for, um, um, yeah, like things that are happening or uh, emergencies and, and etc. So, um. Like, yeah, like 10 minutes before we went live, you only see like three to four people um, of the other guests, you know, uh, it lined, it lined up and we are like, holy shit, is this, is, this it? is this it? Or are we going to have everyone else coming in? So like, it was a little bit anxious, but then like, you see like, like on the second before we went live that, that people all started coming in and and then, well, um, I was chatting with with Ini and everybody else. Like, all right, um, this one, this person is not in yet, so let's move to that person first. And hopefully, that person, and then the one that has not shown up yet, will come in uh, afterwards. And then, at least the moment that I was like, "All right, we're good," was when all of a sudden Chief Little Child popped up. His um, his feet popped up, like, and he was like, everyone, like. Uh, Carson was just relaxed. You were relaxed where you're sitting right now. Uh, Thomas, uh, where you're sitting right now. And then all of a sudden, Chief Lelichaj shows up in his regalia, like with his, in, in full, um, with everything, right? So I was like, oh, wow, like, this is like quite, quite I was, it was special to me. And that was, that was amazing. And then like what stood out for me were two things. Um, one, for me, it was a revelation that um, what Special Rapporteur Rights and Peoples told uh, that, well, like, you don't need to have like a degree in international law, political science to be where you, where I am right now. So in that sense, that was a very empowering, not just to me, but I think for a lot of indigenous people that, 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 that are uh, looking up to him and they were like, he shows a little bit of authenticity and vulnerability as a like, um, you know, you can get to where I am um, just with like <laughs> spit, like just do uh, what, you, what you can do uh, as much as possible. That was one. And then 
when um, Grand Chief Lila Chow talked about, um, yeah, like uh, gratitude. You know, like like you could you could have said anything. You could have said anything. Like what uh, what went through your mind through the pandemic, and all and the the thing that he said uh, was gratitude. And so that was to me like everyone. What everyone said was like technical and very inspiring as always. But like what stood out for me was like the things that you do not expect. You don't expect him or them to say something like that because um, it shows their their how comfortable they are um, with them them themselves and, and like with the group with the format with the people that are talk talking um anything that in itself is, is inspiring as well um just by sharing something from themselves um that um can be as small but it, it can have, have a huge impact um people yeah from the likes of pa uh, pancho and chibolele child saying something like like that so that that stood out for me um as in like wow wow wow, wow. like 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 you talked about aha moment mm -hmm. and i was like oh wow that, that, that that's a, like like an aha moment for me that, that that those people um you let you have them on a pedestal you have them right up here um but then they, then they just show them that they're like they're human beings they're, they're just normal people as well with feelings with with, with their own challenges and I think um, that's why what Ini said, like at the end of it, I was like, huh, on the, on the floor, like relaxed, relieved. Uh, it, because it was, it had everything. It had the technical side of, of negotiations, diplomacy, but also the human side of, of these people, the people behind the, the name, Thomas Azak Yuso, the behind the name, uh, the, the reputation uh, of of Pancho, the reputation of Megan Davis and every, everyone else. So um, that was uh, interesting. No, that that went through my mind. Yeah. Good, good. good, good. Melanie. Yeah. Your thoughts about the first episode? Yeah, and I have to I have to echo uh, Casali on what he said about uh, Francisco Cali, uh, because yeah, I mean now he's like kind of the guy, you no, know, holding the biggest. Uh, yeah, for me, like he is like not right now the most important indigenous uh, representative, you no, know, internationally as as a new selected um, uh, special rapporteur. So for me, I have actually filmed him before a couple of times, and I've always enjoyed. Uh, he's always very personal. Of course, he's still on the pedestal in a way, but but he's always very personal. But when he took out there that he had basically just finished only done high school or like hardly had any, that for me also was like wow this is so powerful uh for me that that was really also the the moment no that um, that stood out because there i felt like yeah uh, that is inspirational if anything is no for for anybody here that i, I mean because there, he has so much respect i think um from from everybody uh, so yeah and he had already you know been heading cert for many years um so, so he had already hold, held like so much technical recognition within the UN system, like um, with the treaty bodies. So, so in that sense, uh, as the only uh, indigenous person, so for me that was also whoa. This, this I had no idea, and um, and I'm sure that that must have uh, been like one of the key moments for anybody of what do you want to tell here? Like, how can you actually strategically also get get far? For me, there was a moment now that uh, that stood out a lot but maybe also linked with my personal history it was when um Rata Jelassi's Roy he said he always referred to the win-win and uh, for me I bring that up because this is also what I think uh, part of our endeavor has been about because and for me always what I have been seeking and what I have loved in the indigenous movement is some of these times where we gather as a caucus uh, and 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 that everybody can actually agree on something. And there, there has been, uh, in the old days, I think, uh, like so much work put into this of, of uh, bringing everybody's voice together and we can move forward together. No? Like, I mean, with our differences and different positions, but we always managed somehow strategically to, 
to be extremely great. I think the indigenous movement is at doing that and challenging the, the governments. And he referred to this win-win always uh, in terms of, of course, that when, when indigenous peoples organize uh, diplomatically, that, that in a way, the way to present it, of course, also with governments is that uh, it's not always this uh, opposition, but that, that they also can see their own win in there. And I think uh, for me, personally speaking, that spoke a lot to the heart of me because I always, when, when we collaborate, I like, because yeah, we are in this together actually, right? We all have the same end goals. There's no need to, um, you're not necessarily stepping on other people's territory or like, uh, and, and here, of course, we did um, this series on a voluntary basis, but this thing that, yeah, I mean, in general, we can actually collaborate and get a lot of things done if we um, if we try to look upon with the glasses of win-win we're not there in competition with each other we can actually you know whether you are several people working on media you can actually achieve things together doing it and um, for me that stood out a, a lot and i think that's that's key in a way also of some of the the good advice that came out but there are so many more and then on the side there, there's one thing I wanted to mention, though, that uh, on this with uh, with the dilemmas so or what happens also behind the scene, I think this thing with the technical <laughs> part, uh, having worked with visual media and new media for, for so many years, I know you can never actually um, be bulletproof. Like you can, sometimes I've had like um, to show a video or whatever, and I had a crowd ready there in the room and I've had it, you know, on a, on a DVD, I've had it on the internet, I've had it on my uh, CD-ROM or whatever, you know, I've tried to, be, to do everything possible for not having a technical issue. But uh, yeah, you can't, sometimes it still happens, you know, like, uh, and, and uh, I think this, uh, you have to overcome it, no, but still, uh, you can never be that safe. So for me, that was... Uh, was of course one of the main, also this challenge, no, of, of, uh, yeah, get the show going, but but knowing that you are not in control of everything, especially not the technical things always. <laughs> Dude, Thomas, your turn. Yeah, um, you know, um, the I was just looking at the Facebook Messenger and going back to the, to the first uh you know first episode when we when we were having this frantic uh <laughs> discussions behind the scene um trying to make sure that everything is working on the technical side and all the guests are there and um and my, my personal kind of impression of the first episode was you know it, i don't know if it was accidental by design but the but the lineup was just uh just just by any means um just brilliant for the for the first show uh, to have the special rapporteur uh, uh, and um, and uh, chief little child, uh, but also you know Thomas heading off the first uh, first fifteen minutes, um, and I guess you know I had my own kind of interest area in in, in, in diplomacy as an aspect, and you, you come in to kind of come with certain expectations, so to say, uh, which which uh, which involves around okay, so you know. I share the language of what Thomas was talking about because, uh, because from a political science perspective, you know, he, he uses concepts like representation, uh, uh, legitimacy, authority, uh, mandates. Um, and those are the kind of concepts that, that kind of shapes my own understanding of, of the world. Uh, maybe not indigenous world, but, but, the, but the world uh, of you know, states or, or, or the Western kind of uh, ways of looking at things. So coming from an outsider, it's like, oh yeah, Thomas, like, you know, I I know him and and, and he's yeah, uh, I know exactly what he means when he says that, um, etc. But then, like as you progressed, you know, uh, you you start you start to kind of uh, experience you know the the, the the concepts and and worldviews that are just completely you know, uh, un, somewhat you know out there in terms of my kind of world of. of my understanding of diplomacy, governance, and representation, and then with grand, you know, with grand, uh, Chief Little Child ending up with the term gratitude as you know, as as a as a vocabulary, uh, as a concept uh, that 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 is cherished and 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 
on the back of the mind of, of indigenous leaders to go out there and 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 uh, and promote their causes. Um, and to me, that the kind of transformation from from um, you know um, what you know what diplomats are thinking, but also um, you know the mindset that you go in. Um, uh, um, when they are in international arena, uh, or just within their community, um, it's it's. You st I start to think that's that's, that's really missing. Uh, we we I really start to see what is missing in in, in our kind of mainstream society. Um, uh, the the, the concept of respect, um, gratitude, empathy, um, uh, and that that's something that. That, that made me think a lot about not just what I what my research is, but also in terms of my own life uh, and my own kind of people around me uh, and the concept that, uh, that that never really seems to emerge from uh, from from the from the earth uh, <laughs> that on which we stand. We just tend to think more more or less towards. We, we became so closed in with the pandemic, and we just care. We just start only to care about people around us, but then I think uh, what taught me uh, through these conversations, uh, especially from Chief Little Child uh, and also Lila to an extent, is that the world is you know bigger not in just terms of space but also in terms of time. Uh, that you know we have to look after people who are far from us, but also people who are yet to come. Uh, and those are the kind of thinking that 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 gives me more and more context about the world that I'm trying to explore. Um, uh, which is huge, and 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 uh, maybe I'm just scratching the surface, and that's that's how I always feel when I, uh, when I get into a conversation like this. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it was it was just a, a you know deep dive uh, as always. Uh, so everybody, yes, everybody talked for 15 minutes, but together it forms a, a very long story. Uh, 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 diving in, um, and then and then to think that you know. There's going to be, you know, four more episodes and three more roundtables to come. I was, <laughs> I, I was, I was, uh, I was not sure, uh, you know, how how deep we were going to go, uh, and and where it, uh, it's like traveling the world uh, to me. Uh, so um, yeah, that's. Uh, I had more. Uh, uh, I think finishing the first episode, I I just I was kind of immediately hooked. Um, uh, it's like I'm going to, a, it's more than just going to a university lecture for me uh, at that point. It was uh, about uh, uh, getting in a circle and, and, and everybody participating, everybody uh, uh, trying to relate to, to what each individual speaker was saying. And, and yeah, uh, I don't know. Good. It, there's more to say, but uh, yeah, that's, that's all I can share right now. Kid, the slow jam, you know, it's low, but it cannot go like for eight hours. So, right, so right. Yeah. let's try to keep it. <laughs> yeah, good. Hoka, <laughs> unmemorable memories from the first episode. Do you have those? Uh, well, to <laughs> maybe physically we can talk eight hours like uh, my brother and sister. <laughs> we were. I have friends from La Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta from Colombia and they talk all night. <laughs> and when we talk something very important to indigenous people and they always invite me, yes, come to talk all night with us <laughs> together in front of the fire. <laughs> Uh, well, memorial sign. Uh, I think the to be part and to listen the different uh, leaders, um, and then uh, to try to to listen them when they are talking together and they explain better what is diplomacy, uh, how to understand human rights, um, and sometimes I was. So about Gazali, he say zombie. <laughs> and I don't know that he say that, but sometimes chatting with him and he's wake up. <laughs> it's like a, when he got, got to bed. <laughs> I, I 
sometimes I didn't really figure out what time is over there in your country. <laughs> and then one day I want to want to stay in one of the episodes, but really I don't know what time is it. And then Gasali told me 3 a.m. for me, I said, ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> because very early, <laughs> but I know for some of them maybe it's very late for us, for some of person, some of people, or for others it's very early. Uh, I think uh, some memorable time is to listen some highlights from different leaders, very important issues, and then when they talking about auto determination, I think it's very important uh, when uh, we listen about how we can do that and uh, some moment when we are planning and listen how we can do that <laughs> round tables uh, uh, and then if we have different uh, uh, ideas uh, about that and then some funny times with with the guys mm, i think uh, we have many more memorable times but <laughs> But maybe I couldn't. I couldn't explain better. <laughs> Just that. Uh, thank you. Very good. Ini, you were moderating the 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 Ellen and of the first episode, and of course you had maybe many different thoughts. But what was what was the comments or or views expressed that stuck in your head? Oh. Uh, I need to go also the things that the leader said about the movement movement itself and I totally agree with all the friends over here that it was not about the numbers it was all about the knowledge and the humble and yeah, the common word would be gratitude. Yeah. And how as a young leader, I was like, it touched me. Yeah. It touched me and made me feel like, wow, if it's like uh, how we were living this crazy time during this uh, pandemic, and how it like, if I were at the main house of my community, the house of wisdom that you luckily Casali and thomas have, have been there so when the leader is chanting and just in uh, the traditional language not the common language so and when they speak and everything that is the feeling that i got it in the end the first episode uh it was like amazing and so that's one of the things that I would like to share. Yeah, it is, it is really touchable for me and it is amazing. I'm so happy and also after the, all the <laughs> stress to, to see everything uh, works properly. Yeah, that's, I can, I can say to us, that's I really love it. Cute. Carson, you are a panelist also and, 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 uh invited to be one of the, one of the panelists uh, what was uh, some of the points that you remember from from the discussion and the panel on the show the first episode well uh, being on the first show I, I looked at the fellow co-panelists and I saw uh, very big 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 um, pillars of the movement, uh, like Prof. Megan, uh, Chief Raja, Lila, Francisco, of course, as mentioned before. And I was like, uh, hey, I only know Thomas Mai and Chief Little Child because those are the people we've met in person. And I was like, I've shook you. I mean, like I shook your hand in somewhere, Thomas, but we've never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, and, 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 and it, it brought um, a sense of, uh, it humbled me to be with such big people, like for example, the rapporteur, uh, Francesco. And 
And so what gave me the energy to, to talk and to talk freely and get to say the ideas that I had was being with such kind of elders, uh, being with people who, uh, who had a, a, ton, a ton of knowledge. Uh, and, and so also that I had the responsibility of being part of the technical team. Most of the time I was just on the phone, uh, the, what the messenger group, like, hey, we're discussing, hey guys, um, did so-and-so say this? Um, uh, hey, it looks like so-and-so is going past 25th minute, uh, what, what shall we do? <laughs> so thinking about all that and, and, and also focusing on the questions that you might be asked by uh, the, uh, the moderators, a lot was going on in my, in my mind. And it was the first, of course, like I said before, it was the first thing it, to do. It was like the first show. I've never been in a TV show. <laughs> and so uh, it was very, uh, um, it was a great moment. Uh, but I, it was a learning moment, of course. And I've always been with my notebook, wherever I go and whatever I do, even right now. So any idea that comes, I just like write it down. So. It, it helps me to unpack later and to see, um, did I say this right? How was my voice? Oh, I must say this. <laughs> um, recording myself, sometimes in Zoom, if that feature is not disabled, I record myself and then I um, I listen to it later how it was. And so it, 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 it will be just also educating, uh, being a media pers personnel as well, I mean, behind the scenes. Uh, is part of the learning process. Like uh, you see these kind of people produce a powerful um, music video, for example. I think uh, I think Melanie said it all. Like you, you're used to creating, but now you're part of the, what you're creating. So <laughs> a mix of all that, you're moderating, you're panelists, you're the technical team, you're also a subject. So first episode was a learning opportunity for, on all fronts. And of course, uh, the power to represent, that goes without saying. I was I was in that panel because I was representing the youth. And though it wasn't like that, that was the reason why I was there. And number two, also thinking about the struggles of my people and the fruits and the, the beauty of the people, of my people and the, the, the indigenous peoples all over the world. All those things gave me strength to always carry on and to do the right thing, um, to, 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 to advance the movement. That was the moment for me. <laughs> good. So first episode done, feelings, good quotes. So working towards the second episode, Zali, what did you change? How did you analyze the first episode? Um, well, the thing, the thing is, like, if you do a first episode, like, and you see something, um, the immediately you, you tend to, like, change things, but it's only one episode. So you can only um, ha see if something works or does not work um, after, like, two or three episodes in. So, uh, but you, if you, in terms of, like, major changes, um, of course, like because of my like, personal uh, circumstance, I had to change, like skip, uh, skip one week. So we did like a, a back to back episode uh, on Friday and Saturday. Um, so that was the challenge. Episode one, we had to, I had to, we had to send out eight uh, emails. Now we had to, all of a sudden, I had to send out 16 emails to take care of everything um, in, in one week. Uh, so that would double the, double the effort. Um, what we changed. Um, in terms of I, I, what I wanted to do is to give like the team uh, more exposure. Um, so I asked um, uh, Carson and Hoki to um, to moderate um, a session um, uh, and, and uh, an episode. That's what I wanted to do, and also do like a um, like a two or three days in advance a like a promo, like a two minute promo, like introducing. Um, the moderators, so, so the people know, like um, they didn't, they know, quote unquote, me, but they don't know the moderator. So, um, and at that point, I, I, I called it a moderator, but in my head, it was already changed into a co-host. 
like like two people um, that were that were hosting the whole thing. Um, th that changed also. Um, what also changed was um, giving them the, the co-host a little bit more. Um, yeah, not a little bit more, but yeah, giving them more opportunities to uh, to participate um, was to ask questions. So during uh, the episodes, we would also like um, have a constant communication. All right, uh, do you want to say something? Uh, do you want to ask a question? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, for example, when uh, when Hoki talked about um, um, talking to uh, Tania Pariona from from uh, from, uh, from Peru. Um, I was like, you know what? Um, you do this. Like, I don't have to. Do, I, I don't have to. Um, um, I, I do the first question, and then Hoki, you you, you can do the rest. Um, so, because I think that was, yeah. To, for, I think Tanya um, um, enjoyed that as well. Um, that um, that that car that conversation. So th those those changes were made. Um, what else did we do? Uh, yeah, emails. I started to include emails as well. So, like, and create, create this email group. So, the, the um, sending out emails to people that they could sign up for, like back to back episodes of the of the webinar series. Um, so, yeah, in, in that sense, uh, nothing much change other than yeah, just trying to amplify um, the the message, uh, the opportunity to be part of the webinar. And um, yeah, and, and then we already started to um, um, how do you call it? Yeah, to repurpose the uh, the w webinar with the segments for YouTube and as as well as podcast. And we also put on so, um, Megan uh, like we, we cut made some cuts, um, so some small clips, uh, posted them on 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 um, on Twitter. Uh, uh, and, and Instagram, as well as uh, some cuts with uh, Carson, for example. Um, so we, yeah, we posted them on on the platforms as well. So there's, yeah, so, so actually, like, um, not much, nothing much changed, but in, in terms of behind the scenes, we made a lot of, um, yeah, the the, the 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 train started rolling. At least that's what I felt. Yeah. The that's good. So regarding to the second episode, um, preparing you it and, and make it happen, Gazali, um, can you describe it uh, or somehow sum up the uh, second episode on who were there and, and what were the, what were the uh, memorable moments that you got from the second episode? Uh, second episode, um... Of course, future proofing. I think uh, that that was something that that really uh, stood out. Um, that was um, Les Malizer's segment. He brought in something that was um, that, that resonated with a lot of people. Because uh, once he said something like that, and people started to talk about that as well, um, on top of what they they want to talk about. Um, because it's uh, well, I think I think I look back at all these these things now. Um, doo -doo -doo. Of course, Jocelyn made her made her appearance. So said that 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 was um, in so I, so like that was episode three, right? Yeah, Jocelyn episode three, and last episode two. Uh, we also like Elsa. Uh, Elsa show um, Elsa was part of it. And I, at that point, up until that point, I didn't really interact much with, with Elsa. Um, but w during her segment, you really got to know like her, that she has a very warm feeling, very nice um, memories and very, um, how would I say it? Um, progressive thinking around like how, what the movement in this movement can do. Um, I, so I think, and that was that was that was nice to me, and I think that for, for a lot of indigenous peoples, uh, appreciated appreciated that as well. Um, then, uh, what daily daily is always 
um, is so you can explain things in a very um, into layman's terms. So um, when we talk about the, the difference between um, local communities and in, indigenous people, so you can explain that very well. So um, so in that sense, it's like a if. It's difficult to really pinpoint something like, all right, yeah, this really stood out because they were all very, um, all the segments were very, um, um, how, how should I say it, um, very unique and very, very interesting in their own right. Um, they all talked about their own perspectives. And you know, Chandra, from a perspective of being uh, the chief of the secretariat at the Perm of the Permanent Forum, um, Kind of there always, you know, like he can is like the the personification of the institutional memory of the, of the of the of the movement. Um, so there, there's there's a lot of things in there that, and to be honest, like to be full disclosure, really honest, is that um, you're listening, um, and I think that's that, that's a challenge with uh, those ten to fifteen minute uh, segments. You're listening, but you're actually also not listening um, because I was also like, all right, next. Which one is the next question? Um, you're trying to so like, you're trying to listen. You're trying to find so like the follow up question, as well as like what should be like the next question on on the list. Keep an eye on the time. So, so there's a lot of things that um, I don't know like how Carson and Tomo and and Jocelyn experienced it as, as they were co-hosts as well. Um, but that would that 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 would still my mind as well. Good. Who would like to add something to the discussion on 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 of the second episode? Hoka. The second episode. Do you have anything memories of, of it specifically? Uh, well, I didn't need to remember because it was <laughs> many episodes. <laughs> And now I'm confused <laughs> uh, about uh, the each episode, but uh, uh, I, I think I, I, I forgot in what episode I was co-host. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I was thinking all episodes, it was great, different person, different moment different question we increase and we get more data about what happened in the in humans indigen, in, in indigenous right and advocacy and then always i enjoy to listen then and to understand better uh, the movement and to try to connect with uh, what uh, we are doing and then for for me it was great to to hear uh, the different person in different episodes. That's true. That's true. As well, anything, anybody something to add on the second episode, Carson? Yeah, uh, Jocelyn, are you in the same uh, part like this one <laughs> right now? <laughs> the same spot. Anyway, what I wanted to say is. There was a moment that you you met. I was so happy to hear your thoughts because you were on the streets and you're using the street light. I was just looking at it right now, <laughs> and um, I think there was a party or something, and and so that shows the dedication to whatever we were do we are doing. Because come what may, was it midnight or anything? You just had to do what we wanted to. I mean, you you wanted to do. Uh, for for the show and uh, I mean to me that was a light moment and, and I still remember and also there was some very powerful thoughts on, from I think it was the first episode uh, good thoughts when we were discussing about the declaration or Andrew like what you, what is which is which and there was um, there was an academic discussion as well as uh, the discourse or going back how we came to uh, how the whole idea came to be like why do we have the declaration and why should we use the hundred and hundred and i remember the discussion between uh, professor megan and les for me i just had to step back and listen because that was a process like 
they were the librarians of everything <clears throat> behind the scenes, uh, the actual doctrine and everything. So, um, yeah, so that was part of the moment that I had. And, and, and then when I was, uh, when I was a co-moderator, uh, uh, I can't even remember which episode it was. I think it was number three. And I, uh, I had very powerful uh, panelists as well, including John Cedar. I think he's watching right now. <laughs> powerful thoughts when he, that he gave us and uh, it, it took me back to when we went to their people's land in the Ecuadorian Amazon uh, with this background image so we have a lot of beautiful memories for this um, for this show and I can't wait to see what happens next yeah back to you Thomas thank you um yeah I mean the second episode was uh um, really kind of, in my my view, uh, continue, continuing the uh, uh, level or expectation that maybe were and was uh, built in the first episode and having the likes of Kenneth and Sandra um, there, there and, and, and others really build it, 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 it towards. And I think Tanya's, um, Tanya's kind of clear... Um, views on, on, on issues that she would like to see happening and what she's working is something that uh, were really, really interesting to also hear. And good to hear also, I was working with Tanya really closely during the World Conference process. And and, and uh, after that, we haven't seen each other that much. So it was good to, good to also hear her. Ghazali, episode three, well, what's your reflections? Oh. Yeah, so episode three, we had uh, Les, Rodian, and Miriam, Andrea. Um, uh, one, one thing that I <laughs> think about episode three is something that, that I didn't like is that all of a sudden, um, and uh, like Andrea wanted to do um, a PowerPoint. Um, like w everyone was like, all right, speaking from the, shooting from the hip, uh, talking about their own ideas and then uh, like it, it interrupted the flow a little bit, um, which is what she wanted to do it, which is fine, of course. But it to me, I was like, hmm. Like, um, hopefully, this does not invite other people to like to throw in powerpoints as well. Um, luckily, everyone, um, everyone was pretty much stay, stayed the same in terms of like um, did not introduce any 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 powerpoints. I'm um, like so. Uh, that was. I'm confused now. No. So who do you, we have? We had Rodian. Um, I think what stood out from from that episode was that a, a lot of people were reaching out afterwards. Um, very impressed with uh, what uh, Rodian said, um, mm -hmm. like the, the Siberian perspective. Um, a lot of people were very 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 impressed with it. Um, mostly because they did they don't know. Uh, about the uh, indigenous peoples, the Udigapir nation, indigenous peoples in Russia, uh, that that's like a whole blind spot for them. And I think, um, and that is something that I also um, appreciate from, um, not, not appreciate, but like, it was also an idea, like one of the byproducts of, of this whole series is that exposing struggles that, that people, a lot of people don't know about. A lot of people don't know about the Udigapir nation. A lot of people don't know about the Indoroid. A lot of people don't know about the Indian peoples in Taiwan, like how they are, um, how, how they are struggling with, with with the systems that they have to deal with. So exposing the, those, those situations so that people can see, like, ah, there are Indian peoples in, in in Taiwan. There are people in these peoples in 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 um, in Russia, and the the Maasai are not the only Indian peoples in Kenya. Like you also have the the Indoroid, you know, like so. Yeah, like so. So in that sense, uh, that's when when it came, became very clear to me that uh, um, yeah, people are seeing that there's more than meets the eye, than meets the eye to the movement. It's not just uh, the Sami. It's not just the Navajo Nation. It's not just the the Ermiskin Cree. It's it's, it's much more than that. Um, so I, I think I think that 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 that's what really stood out for me when I, in that episode. Miriam Wallet Abu Bakrin <clears throat> coming in, um, former like. Very charming uh, as um, lady, um, but very strong in her, in her conviction. In her conviction, um, also former chair of the Perm Forum, 
Um, so there's a lot of things that 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 that, that people didn't know about the, these people, and we try to capture that as much as possible in those those ten to fifteen minutes. Um, so I don't know if, if I'm doing overlap of episodes two and three, but like it is it is well may, mostly be, because it was a back to back episode. So um, that's what 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 what's stood out actually is that um, uh, diversity and like. Um, yeah, those, those exposing those blind spots. Yeah, that's 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 really true. I know that Jocelyn, you you are having some plans to fulfill, so I will kind of a uh, little bit interrupt interrupt the the, the episode numbers and ask from you. Kind of overall common that as, as you were part of the group, you were a panelist, you were a moderator, you were taking part to the to the final three episodes that were done in a little bit different format. How would you describe your emotions? <laughs> Thank you. Well, I will have, first I will have to say that one thing very, I think it's our um, unique strength about this webinar is that because uh, Gonzali and Thomas and also many people here that you discuss about the questions you want to ask and also I like the people. It's all, uh, you, you, we really know these people, you know, or you've been working with these people, so you know what would be the moment that is really special for them. And uh, just like my part that Gonzali asked me about when I was, uh, for the very first time, I was able to really say uh, in the conference room that I'm from Taiwan and the issue that the issues that I'm facing as a Taiwan indigenous person. And that's a, of course, that's a very private moment, but it's a, also a moment that, you know, if, if it's not you guys, I would not feel comfortable to really share in the way that I share. When, when, when I was doing my uh, one to one conversation. So that's the strength I, I really like about this whole series of webinar because, you know, all these conversations is not just diplomatic talk, it's more based on our real um, conversations that we had in the past years. And also that I, that's why I was jo I was uh, joking that, you know, that really make us human. We're not zombies, you know. <laughs> So that's the thing I really like. And um, the other thing is that, um, uh, wait, <laughs> I was a bit. Um, the other thing is that last episode, not last, the, uh, the episode we had with the uh, Chinese translation, because I was talking about at the end that we should be able to be recognized as experts. It's not only the thing that we are trying to, we, we try to push for as an Indian nation to be recognized as youth expert, but also that back home, we should also be recognized as expert just because we are doing the job, we are doing the work. And, uh, but I, I was saying that in Taiwan, we, need, we, a lot of times we, if we want to be recognized as experts, then we will have to be, in a certain position in the government or you know to have a phd degree and that's why i was doing i'm doing a phd and <laughs> and i got many messages after that one <laughs> like i got uh, some some uh younger people they were sending me messages saying that they 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 were really surprised that i said so because for them they thought that I was already in a certain position that people would consider me as kind of experts or I, I had kind of influence. And because they thought I was like that, so they feel the distance from me, uh, between me and them. But because, uh, be but because I said that during that episode, they, they feel all these things starting to make sense for them. I'm not so sure if I make sense. I, I I'm making sense by saying this. It's just that I would say that you know it's uh, this webinar, this sharing is really showing people the process or the struggles, the very personal and private struggles, the thoughts we had, and that make everything so real for the people who never got to know about this detailed process. 
they get a uh, a clip of it and also they got an idea of that and then they feel it's not so far from them you know it's not a story that is i don't know so far away in new york in the nation that is somewhere they can never they can never reach but it's really like just like everyone so yeah that's that's something i would really like to say and also the the other thing is about uh this surprising or memorable moment we had that was um during my my the episode that i was um i was co-hosting with ruka uh, with uh ruka as one of the 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 guests and then we were talking about coffee 19 and i remember when she was you know with ruka ways of expression that is very energetic and then she was saying something like we love uh, we love COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen is our friends, and we welcome COVID nineteen. I, I I remember a lot of time. I was a bit shocked because I I was not really prepared what she's going to, to 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 surprise us next with this um this uh statement. But then that really remind me something too that sometimes we are so used to a certain way of thinking or to see things and uh and then with this series of discussion we see that there are a lot of different ways that how we can see different things yeah, just as just as uh, melanie was mentioning about the visit she's talking he's talking about this win-win all the time but we tend to forget about this way of thinking so i like that moment a lot when luca surprised all of us with that statement because that also reminds us that when we see COVID-19, we see all the, most of the negative side. But actually it also, it's also a reminder to us to really take a break, to really have the time to ourselves. For, for, for example, that if we have a, a, in the tourist, um, industry in Taiwan, it's always about going to indigenous areas. And because of COVID-19, we don't have so many tourists anymore to come to our areas. And if we, I put in Lucas' way of saying that, it's really a blessing, though. Then we really keep these people away for a while that we can really rethink how can we manage all these things and also rethink how can we um, go back to the nature to to again we conciliate ourselves with our homeland so yeah so I, I i really appreciate that moment and also the 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 reminders that we we kept getting from all episodes thank you it was really good to you. see you and hear you and 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 always a pleasure to 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 be able to talk with you i know that you're in a hurry so Thanks for coming. We're gonna continue with the discussions on, on, on other other episodes. And hopefully, hopefully we can meet all each other um, in a physical places and people after the COVID situation is solved. So let's go to the next discussion. Uh, well, we were in the third episode still. Does anybody of the of the from the group has specific comments on the episode three yeah carson please yeah uh, i just remembered that episode three was uh had a sentimental attachment for me <laughs> because uh, most of the panelists were some of my my people who have trained me that mentored me in the journey and in the in the movement because I remember, for example, with um, Mariam, uh, she's been she's been able to guide me sometimes. We text and uh, I text her, ask her, I mean, about some advice. Advice, and um, uh, I I don't know what to say even about uh, Andrea Carmen, uh, about uh, Professor Elsa as well. Uh, those those people uh, when i was interviewing them I, I remember a situation where we had not discussed in our private chat that um i can come in and 
an interview also and and i was um, i was i wouldn't say i don't know something took took me like and i, I just came in and and, and 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 after introducing elsa i wanted to intro, to continue interviewing her while it was the time for gasali to now interview after introducing and for me i was like it was a proud moment and i wanted to talk to to talk with, with elsa and ask her the questions and it, it need to connect the human nature but elsa is a powerful friend as well and she's been a teacher to me an advisor a mentor everything that everything everything uh, in movement and same to andrea and that was the moment that we connected uh, it was um that human connection was very powerful i felt like that was important to mention because some of our viewers might remember that situation where i told uh, i wish i was the one to interview you <laughs> yeah yeah thank you. yeah anybody else on the third episode Come yeah, um, I just want to kind of chip in, um, and maybe I, I I just want to kind of flag uh, let's concept of future proofing because I I really uh, it, uh, uh, it's still stuck in my head, and um, and of course the roundtable that we did yesterday um, tried to kind of uh, visualize that a little bit, uh, at least international context. Maybe maybe this is for a later discussion, but I I just want to acknowledge you know um, like. Every time I, I have this kind of special uh, ears when uh, when Rodion is talking for some reason um, because you know maybe because I lived in Russia for some time and, and I think it takes a lot of courage to 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 uh, say what he said uh, recognition remedy respect and really calls out on on governments and and states uh, and highlight their issues uh, in a way that Rodion does and also Potencia as well. And it's just that, you know, maybe it, it also speaks to the credibility and, and trust that, that people have to, you know, Kazali and Thomas and the show uh, for people to really come out and share their really inner thoughts, even though, you know, I think oftentimes you underestimate how, if how, uh, how difficult it is for, for people to come out and say what they say, uh, especially when they're in a situation uh, that, that they can uh, get into trouble. Um, so, um, no, huge, huge respect, um, uh, I felt for Rodion, um, when he, when he, uh, shared his, his, his ideas and thoughts, uh, um, and, uh, and I, I also quite liked, uh, Elsa's, um, uh, time, uh, maybe because, uh, we, we, we're both in the academia, but she's also kind of interested in this notion of, you know, external self-determination, which is, which is kind of an area that, that, that I also have a personal interest in uh, and how that is exercised through uh, representation and, and diplomacy uh, uh, and what, uh, and, and uh, I think we have a lot in common. Um, and again, um, bringing out uh, that people from you know, diverse backgrounds, including academics and non-indigenous people and, and supporters and allies. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's it's a little hook that I felt uh, uh, that I can uh, attach myself to, uh, and maybe follow uh, other people's work. Uh, it's, it's just uh, like uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I think it was Jocelyn who says Wikipedia. Uh, I would like to think it's a little bit more than Wikipedia. It's more like an encyclopedia or something a thicker book. Uh, but uh, but it was it was it was a many more. Well, I hate saying many, but it was like a really good uh, grasp of case. And who you know who. Stim who stimulates my kind of uh, way, uh, intellectual thinking uh, uh, in, uh, in the indigenous peoples um, uh, diplomacies and, and, and governance and representation. And that, that I think episode three was, uh, was perhaps one of my favorite, uh, most favorites in this show. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So Ghazali episode four, remarks, thoughts. <sighs> um... Yeah, well, episode four, we brought in uh, Hande Mohammed. Um, unfortunately, well, I, I should have known that. Um, it was, um, yeah, a holy day for, for, um, for him, uh, for the Muslim world. So um, I should have known that, I scheduled him on a, on a different day. Because, um, yeah, halfway the, the um, I think he just was just right into his 
his rem opening remarks that he uh, his, his connection fell through. Um, we had, um, and that was actually the the uh, the, um, the episode that um, that Jocelyn was, was uh, co uh, co-hosting co with uh, Ruka um, uh, from, from Ind Indonesia. Um, Tuve from from Greenland. She just um, um, so and then, then with Tuve, for example, um, she she um, has been for a very long time in the in the indigenous world, um, uh, but also like works well, what not not anymore, but it works uh, for uh, for quite a, num a number of years for with the EU. And I just um, I think bringing Tuve in we could also bring in the EU aspect of that yeah people are not are. Right now, mostly focus on the United Nations, but the EU is um, is also very important. the re The reach of the European Union is goes uh, far beyond the twenty eight uh, member states or twenty seven uh, member states. Uh, um, you know, it, it goes further than that. Um, so bringing that in, um, highlighting the opportunities that that um, that EU that we Indigenous peoples can 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 uh, can utilize in EU is what what was. Um, and I know I open to to many people uh, based on, on the, the, the feedback that we received afterwards. Um, Rune, of course, um, it is not always like the people um, um, that are like like the, in the leadership position, of course, like the presidents, the the secretary generals, the executive directors, but also like the the people that are doing the uh, what I like to call the hand to hand combat behind the behind the scenes. Um, Rune has, has been a director general of the summer parliament in Norway, and like my interest in him, having him on a show was also like mostly, uh, not a lot of people know that because he was only one of the only people uh, in New York doing a follow up uh, of the World Conference uh, process, um, particularly on the enhanced participation process. You know, and there's, um, yeah, and we we dropped the ball as a movement, um, 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 on that. You know, like we we after the World Conference, we were all fine, outcome document, everything else, celebrating, went on a boat, went on a cruise and around in Manhattan, and that was fine. Um, but then the follow-up uh, process came in, and then we kind of dropped the ball a bit. So I wanted to let, let people see firsthand, uh, um, get, that they know what, what the effects are if you drop the ball, if, if you do not do the follow-up. So, so like my 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 intake with, with Rune was all right. Um, so you were in New York. What were the challenges like? What and how did you face them? Um, so I, I think that there's there's all of course there's the the, the interest in the in the in the um, yeah the personal side the personal the person behind um, behind reputation uh, the work um, the good the good um, moments but also like. That also highlight. We also have to like to recognize the moments that we 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 dropped the ball that that we sucked, you know. So um, I, th I think that that was um, with the room that sh sh stood out as well. Uh, we had Esteban show. Well, Esteban is a very good friend of everyone, I guess. Uh, um, uh, you, yourself, Thomas, uh, Melanie, myself, Tomo. Um, right now, challenging. Challenging position right now uh, in in Panama. Um, so, I think um, having him talk about the movement about NS participation was also good. Like um, I cannot imagine a a, a lineup a, a panel without a uh, like global panel without without Esteban show. Um, mostly because he is um, yeah like because he's um, very active uh, and also highlights a little bit uh, about. Um, I would love to have more Latin American speakers panelists on 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 the webinar. We try to reach as many as, many as possible of them. Like it goes to like our network, of course. Um, but also, it could also be, and this is just my one man's opinion, one man's point of view uh, about um, yeah. There's not many Latin American people from Latin America that 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 um, are uh, intimate with 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 all most. All the processes. Um, so um, yeah, those are just my thoughts on 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 on, on that episode, which is ep four. Episode four. Do we have the thoughts from the comments of the group? 
Mm, I don't you, seem to see it. No, How I, more do you are? Uh, yeah, I just want to kind of echo what Kazali said about Luna and, and his very insightful kind of experience that, that, that he went through in the world conference process. It's, it's like a you know, nugget that, that you don't always get to see uh, on news or on uh, in, in other people's stories that he, he shared with us. Uh, it, was, it was something that, that, that was uh, very memorable to me uh, in that episode. Just wanted to add. Yeah, Melanie? All right. Several episodes, right? Like uh, of when I thought uh, there were real good advice coming out, no? Like or, or surprises exactly. So uh, some of them have been mentioned um, already by by you guys. So, um, but yeah, I think also I, I appreciate it a lot. I'm sorry I um, I was absent for a small moment. Uh, but uh, I appreciate it a lot in in, in uh, the first episode, also the question there that we had this icebreaker question um, of why do you do this, finish the sentence. Um, and, and there I felt that we, um, it, it related to everybody, you know, of, um, of why, why are we doing this work actually. And it makes everybody also think about it themselves. And I think there, there, that functioned very well. And on the side note, there also with um, with that there were two moderators always. I think that was a good lesson actually also for all of us. Uh, or like because yes, in case something goes wrong, there is always the other one. Because yeah, we, we had then of course in that episode uh, the 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 problem. No, that one of the panelists could not attend. Uh, but but still. Okay, we had several guests, but at least if there is a the moderator can always be there, not if there are two. So, um, but anyway, I don't want to necessarily say a lot more because I know that Jocelyn, she mentioned Ruka, you know, and that I think was still uh, one of my big moments also in, in that episode was really when, uh, when Ruka was there, like uh, uh, she's still like the head of maybe one of the biggest indigenous organizations right now. Uh, <laughs> A man, no, based in Indonesia, and then she suddenly, like, where well, we know, they really are in deep shit. Sorry to use the word, but but they're really up against um, a lot of, yeah. And then uh, saying that the virus is a gift, and uh, because we as indigenous peoples, we are all about solidarity, and this virus has actually been sent by nature, no. Whereas we will, I mean, and. Um, telling us stop being greedy stay where you are because we can only rely on ourselves and this i think that we had actually coming in some of the a lot of the episodes this that it has now we don't really want to talk covid and we really want to go beyond no on how we have to um organize as a movement or how we can can work exactly towards enhanced participation and, and really strengthen the movement um, on the international stage as well but there is still that there has been this big lesson coming out that indigenous peoples actually have been exercising a lot more self-determination because of COVID. And that, that I think came very strong out in, in the different, um, or also in that episode exactly with, um, yeah, so yeah, I let you continue. <laughs> yes, good. So then, then the fifth episode was, that was the last episode before the, before the group discussions. Ghazali, thoughts? Yeah, well, oh, so yeah, well, so so the 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 fifth, the last, um, yeah, one on one conversation, we're already like getting towards the, the round table, um, but yeah, of course, we had been uh, as always, very, very, very um, insightful. Uh, always like what I like about Benota, like he likes to go back to um, like the core, like the 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 important, uh, the backbone of the movement, which is self determination. Like the, the political movement. And that's what I really like about him. Um, always being able to relate back um, to it. Um, so, like, I maybe it was a coincidence, maybe not. But like having him as a first uh, speaker on, uh, on 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 that episode was was, was very helpful. Um, having Ali Cascatalo, of course, um, it was right before we announced the whole webinar series that then it came to light that she would not run for re-election. Um, Tomo was uh, the the co-host of 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 that uh, episode, 
Um, so I pretty much gave Tomo like, like, all right, come on, Tomo, like, you, you take it away. You can um, uh, go ahead and 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 run that run that segment. Um, and I, I think that is, is also very interesting. Like we all know, um, yeah, um, um, the we we see Ali Ali and uh, she's one of the role models for a lot of indigenous women, uh, girls as well. Um, but also, it's very important and interesting to learn. Um, but like, what what are you gonna do next? And then she said, "Well, I would like to go um, back to like what um, she always wanted to do as as a kid was to write books and stuff." So like, you know, like again, like the the human uh, the human side of the human behind the behind the person, you know. And, and then uh, f f uh, we we had uh, Tarsila Frank with with his um, indigenous determined contributions to to the. Uh, as as our way of, of um, national determined contributions in terms of the climate change is always interesting. Um, so like give him a, 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 the availability, the time to unpack that. Um, we also had Tarsila uh, talking about leadership, uh, capacity building. Um, she she runs, uh, she's, she's very heavily involved with FEMI, a training program. Um, so it is always good to, to um, to see that, like Tertilla, is is a person that uh, is um, really thinking about like uh, what's next, um, trying to build the capacities, making sure that that making making the making the the, the, the movement stronger. And I would I wanted to let people know that side of her because uh, not a lot of people know that side of her. And so that really came came forward in in that in that. Um, um, yeah, in, in that in that segment, and then of course Pavel. Um, we talked a lot to at length throughout at least two in in, in this in this uh, um, yeah this talk about, about about yeah like about Pavel, the Russian side, Udigan Nation, PhD, highest concentration of PhDs in in, in indigenous um, uh, territories, communities, um, and, and and that is to to um, I have to like give a lot of credit to that to to the, the to Tomo do doing his research as a as a co-host, um, uh, and then and then you know, trying to come up with questions that make gives provides valuable to guests, but also um, is very interesting to um, uh, to the guests himself as well to to answer. So yeah, that that that's, uh, that was uh, episode five um, uh, in in in. in Quickly, um, the interesting, I uh, really interesting, find interesting about it. Tomo, do you have reflections on the episode five? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Ghazali covered uh, very much uh, what the episode was about. But I guess you know, coming into this episode uh, as a co-host, uh, perhaps is is one of the uh, probably the more uh, the scariest thing that I've, I I I have done so far. Uh, ever since coming in, um, when, when Ghazali asked me um, to co-host, it was uh, uh, I thought he never would. Uh, but 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 it, it, I guess you know that's Ghazali. You know, uh, it, it doesn't matter you know whether whether you're you're uh, you're indigenous or not. Um, but when you get an opportunity like this, you you really want to get it uh, get it right. And I think I think. I also wanted to kind of send a message that you know, if if you have the uh, right mindset and and determination, then 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 well, you can, you can be part of it. Um, and and I be mean, I feel that uh, that a lot of the panelists here um, uh, really uh, uh, you know made me feel like I'm I'm part of something, and and I also. Um, uh, uh, took the questions uh, uh, very straight, uh, uh, straight from the front, and 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 answered some of the questions, which I thought was a little bit uh, uh, relevant for for at least for non-Indigenous person like myself, and how 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 they can relate to the movement in different ways. Um, and obviously, uh, it's a it's a huge privilege, um, of course, to be able to uh, have time to ask questions to to uh, I know I know Binota and Frank very well. Um, and it's 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 the messaging is very consistent and 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 uh, and and that was uh, uh, very very um, good good to uh, good to hear and and obviously Ailey um, um, it's very interesting uh, 
uh, some of the questions that 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 uh, that that I've raised, and she she answered, of course, uh, very comprehensively and and about her future, and she was very uh, quite hesitant to to discuss that just yet, but. But again, like Ghazali said, you know, going diplomatic. Back, she was diplomatic, yeah, right? Diplomatic. Yeah. But going back to, um, you know, going back to writing books, it's like, like Ghazali said, you know, you, you really get it, only in a time like this, you really get to see uh, the, the 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 character and uh, and behind uh, behind the diplomatic mask that they they had to wear often in public. Um. Yeah. So uh, I I think. I mean, we, we see many of these faces in the round table too, and and uh, and that's another different context that, that maybe Thomas will get into later. But uh, but it, overall, I just I just felt like I was I, I was really welcome. And, and, and if any you know if any non-indigenous uh, uh, people who wants to contribute and support uh, what 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 Ghazali does, what Thomas does, what what we do, uh, then then uh, they shouldn't really be afraid to come out and say, hey, I want to try this. Uh, and then, and then uh, I can, uh, we can all uh, work together. Uh, so that, that, that's the kind of, uh, when I finished doing it, that's, uh, that's the possibility that, 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 that I kind of confirm myself uh, that, that you can do it if you, uh, if, uh, if you put your hearts and mind to it. Yeah. That, that's pretty much true. Uh, yeah. As the slow jam has been kind of a mega jam already, uh, uh, I will try to sum up uh, <laughs> Tom Harvey. <laughs> I'm the, the, one, I'm the, the one who's taking a lot of time, isn't it? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, but I, I think, I think it's, it's good that we take it in a relaxed way. But you know, realities are realities. Um, the, I, I, I think that the episode six, seven, and eight, of course, changed the format. Yeah, you guys had um, panelists together uh, having discussions uh, jointly, and I think it was a really good uh, way of of concluding some of the discussions that were done in, in one by one. There were really high level discussions on topics of representation, self-determination, the enhanced participation process, what is going on in the United Nations, about priorities, methods, about strategies, what is happening in the United Nations currently, and, and, and so forth. So I think that it really, uh, gave us the opportunity to discuss and have those talks in an in-depth level. I haven't heard and have been little involved in that kind of discussions where we are more from the relaxed perspective uh, and discussing so-called informal way uh, about this topic. So they really, really pushed the push the, 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 the initial idea and topic to the table where, where self-determination, representation, representative institutions, enhanced participation were the ideas that I gave to Ghazali and, and, and hope that, that those, those twists, those would be uh, kind of um, focused. Uh, there were really many results from the episodes you could um, it's 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 I guess impossible to try to um, try to conclude in a one one even a three and a half hour session, but but um, um, I think that uh, one of the great strengths of 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 whole process is that that we have shown that these discussions can be done in in an internet format. We don't need to be physically on the same place. Also, that we can discuss these issues. Self-determination is really a difficult topic in many areas of the world. And, and, and I think that the lineup really, really supported everything to come up to, to, to a level uh, where you as a group have reached a really good result. It's been really interesting from my part also as, as giving, giving the idea uh, then uh, kind of um, let's say fixing or, or, or seeing whether the concept notes is, is in there what I had been wishing putting some of the names on the list and trying to help that those names are are coming to the source but but it's really been you guys that have been uh, doing the the content everything and 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 
Now, when we are in the result part, we have yesterday finalized the last episode. I really have to congratulate you guys on your work, uh, everything done in your free time. Gazali has really invested hard, and um, but also his own money uh, on, 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 on this. And that is really uh, something to uh, be appreciative, I think. So I'm, I, I would like to also show really gratitude on that side. Um, as the time is a little bit something that the slow mega jams, you know, can be can be kind of lengthy. I hope that you would now be able to give conclusions on whole of the whole of the process, all the episodes, share your emotions, and and Ghazali, now you cannot start. You will be the last one. Uh, let's say let's see. Has can the group make you cry? Melanie, please. <laughs> yeah. I, first of all, I love this when you say slow jam. You know, I can't wait to be there, you know, in the rhythm with you guys again. <laughs> so, no. But um, I, what, uh, I think exactly this thing that, uh, that I want to put, uh, yeah, where I want to put my finger is this that uh, I feel we started something. I didn't feel that we totally ended it with uh, yesterday's, uh, la the last episode. I think that there has been um, so much interest in all this. And um, and yeah, exactly. I hope we set this example that, that we can actually, you know, really strategize and, and uh, exchange even if we cannot meet up because I think there might, sadly enough, uh, it won't happen right right away <laughs> and hopefully it will happen in the future but there will certainly be more and more the need to um, to participate uh, from virtually we are seeing you know from a lot of the at least here in geneva with the different um, treaty bodies and uh, the human rights council that there's more and more this tendency of meeting up um, yeah from distance no that there will be virtual participation of course it's super concerning because yeah i think uh, it was also coming out from a lot of the episodes that uh and i also from my own experience i've seen you know that uh, you guys indigenous representatives i mean one of the big weapons when we do advocacy is this that uh talking to the hearts of the governments or to educate them to it, it matters a lot to be there in person but that doesn't mean that we cannot of course organize amongst each other and there's been a lot of interest uh, and in different episodes saying, yeah, we should do an episode on this or that subject, uh, on self-determination, uh, go more in depth on, on business, human rights. There were many, um, of course, also media. <laughs> well, I won't mention them all, but it was clear that there from the panelists as well was this interest that we should continue. No? So, um, so I hope we will be back soon. And... Um, and do do something more from all this experience. But at least I, I want to say, based on also the the roundtables, that I think um, that there there we started something, no? And that was also the I think the whole interest. Um, yeah, like there is, we we are just part of the process, and at least we um, we may have pushed it in a good direction. Good, thank you, Carson. Your time to show and make Sally cry. Oh, oh, was, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I wanted to make him cry as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't give him, that. Will, maybe we can make you cry after Gasali. You know, now I also get sentimental here. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, it's not an end. Right? Guys, all right. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you for sharing this, and. Um, Thank you for being part of uh, this series. I got to learn a lot from you as well. And also to Thomas. Um, man, I didn't know um, your organization skills and everything that you've been able to do for us in the movement, in the indigenous people's movement. Uh, and to our brother, Kasali. Uh, first of all, let me talk about uh, Joseph. Uh, yeah, with Kasali. Uh, sandwich in between all of you. Uh, Joseph has been like I started this journey with Joseph. Uh, in 2017, they trained me and other indigenous youth in the Afri in African region 
on uh, on on oral tradition, uh, basically the te techniques and know-how and uh, audiovisual, and coming all the way and seeing how they support the indigenous people's movement and how they've been in the movement for so long. I send a lot of blessings to them and then the interpreters, their, their trainers, I know they have a lot of things they do for us and I appreciate all this. And to my brother Gasale, since the day one that I knew you, I was actually intimidated thinking that you're this kind of a giant and I, I don't know how to approach them. And once I knew you, I learned a lot and you taught me and you became open, uh, more like uh, what you, you talked about um, how our pillars in the movement, uh, the people that we see uh, in the diplomacy aspect, but now they've shown us, they've shown us the human aspect and the indigeneity in them. And that's what I see in you. And I really appreciate so much what you've taught me, um, officially and unofficially, of course, um, when we go private, when you talk. And let me just say something about Kisali. This is now private, really private. Uh, when we were studying the Project Indigenous, that is the tea time, Talks. I wanted to do the Project Indigenous as well, and many of you know, those who are watching and those who didn't watch. And I was in a dark spot. I, uh, my income was dwindling because of the COVID, we were in a lockdown, I was uh, locked far from my, my family. I was very far away from home, almost 700 kilometers away. And uh, I couldn't pass through Nairobi and all that, but uh, Gus Hali was able to help me um, in his own little way and i bless you so much my brother and he encouraged me how other people have been in such kind of situation including himself and he could understand and contextualize and that for me i came back to life i was almost thinking like with this covid i don't have any income i have a lot of talents i don't know what to do i can go do farming because my people i can go to my people because i risk with corona and all that and um there were a lot of things. I was also separated from my family because of the COVID. And when we started talking about pro the tea time and Project Indigenous, I uh, I started opening up and I, I just shared with them and we had a conversation and I came back to life. And now when 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 we were doing this, um, Ghazali and other friends uh, assisted me for with with support in internet connection some sometimes when I wasn't able to do and and I came back to life because I told them that once I do this and this I would be okay. I gave like I, I remember uh, that is when I, I came back I literally came back to my passion and, and and I found I found love in this passion that I do for indigenous peoples because that's what that's what I like doing and that's um I would like, I was born to do this. I remember saying it even in the first episode. Uh, the first time that I saw you, Gasali, uh, when you taught us last year at the project, um, I mean, at Project Access Training with Tribaling, I learned a lot, the 100, and I still have uh, the copies of the 100 and the whole episodes of your speech, I mean, with your, uh, with your, of your, 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 your segment. And it came in and unpacked and unpacked. That's how, that's how we learn from all of you. And I know that each, each of you, uh, the people in this, um, the people listening and, and, my, uh, and my team in this How to Indigenous, we have the power and we have everything within us to make this movement grow strong and to build ourselves diplomatically. Um, I mean, uh, and, and in governance, and we need to make sure that we don't let down the people who have come before us We've had people like Kenneth Deer. Uh, I came to know them uh, as well through reading and knowing what they've been doing, uh, like Chief Literature. I've learned a lot how we went to fight all through in their court system and team they've been, uh, I mean, in the judiciary. And now um, advocates in Canada, for example, uh, can, can swear by their traditional uh, way instead of, for example, using a Bible or using uh quran i'm just seeing like that is the sense of sense uh, self determination and such kind of uh, pillars that we have in the movement are enhanced by the creatives that came through people like you Gasali. i appreciate so much and people listening today have learned a lot as well and they know that 
this movement is going strong and it's expanding, um, expanding in the space. And that as well, uh, I would appreciate the support system that you have, and I bless you as well. Uh, the support system in your in New Gasale, that is including your best friend Thomas and Rambit Media and everyone else you've been in contact with, and how you were helped. And I know that we're all go we're all going to leave and to see and to bless other people uh, till our uh, old age, and then we become future libraries as well. And we do we preserve. We promote and preserve uh, the indigenous life ways. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carson, for those words. Those are pretty strong words. Definitely make Kazali already cry. Come on. Trust me, I try. I tried to make Kazali cry a few times uh, in Madrid, but that didn't work. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Look, I think ever since uh, COVID, uh, I've uh, been on many, many calls with Ghazali and, and others um, uh, and, and try to kind of support, you know, Ghazali's projects and uh, inspiration. Um, I mean, because I'm inspired by it. Um, and, and I think we all have that, we all had that moment when we doubted ourselves, you know, this this project may not go ahead uh, or, or, or it's, you know, it's, it's too little people who are interested in it. Um, and I think every time I thought about that, I was always proven wrong. Um, even up to yesterday, you know, when we, when I was telling people, <laughs> um, um, when I was, when I was telling in the group that, oh, maybe, you know, we have a lot of people in our, in our round table and we don't, we don't really know how to get through all of them uh, without um, giving them too little time. But again, um, you know, turns out uh, after uh, I finished yesterday's roundtable, we actually nailed it. Um, and and um, so, so yeah, Ghazali always kind of, you know, he pushes forward with his own vision and, uh, and tried new things, learn from mistakes. And then essentially he always ends up being, the, uh, being uh, one of the uh, 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 influencers uh, in, in uh, in, in, in a difficult time we live in. And another thing that I just want to kind of mention, and this is kind of my personal you know, journey through, you know, um, uh, through this uh, indigen uh, international indigenous people's movement. Um, and, you know, just, just remember, you know, two, two years ago, uh, I was in Bonn, and there was the first time I, I came to any meetings uh, that uh, where indigenous people uh, were present. And, and I know at that time, some people thought I was, uh, I was an Asian spy. Um, but I was just sitting in the corner of the room, um, just observing. Um, and now, you know, I came to a position where, where, you know, where we can, where I can sit and talk with, you know, the, the president of the Sami parliament in Finland and represent and, and interview some of the most influential figures, uh, leaders, mentors, um, elders, uh, young activists, uh, in indigenous people's community is, 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 is remarkable. And it's, and it's not just a testament to, you know, my own determination, but it's also a testament to, you know, indigenous people's accommodation, um, friendship, trust, uh, respect, um, and, and then just their general openness uh, to, to, em to embrace uh, people like a uh, person like myself to, 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 to really understand um, uh, the inner workings of, 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 of a movement that has done so much and still continues to do more. Uh, for for uh, for not just indigenous peoples but also for the environment and, and, and other issues uh, where we as a as a society uh, should be very concerned concerned about um, and and then like Melanie said like this is this is for me like a beginning of the uh, beginning of the uh, end of the beginning of the beginning um, I know that that I get the sense that there are people who really want to continue this discussion. Um, and I know that Ghazali is already uh, thinking ahead uh, and, and try to bring these people back and unpack many of the uh, things that, that we have touched upon uh, that needs more work and more focus. Uh, so I know that, you know, for example, Pavel will be back. Um, I know that uh, uh, if opportunities were given, everyone will be back. Uh, so I'm just uh, looking forward to, the, uh, to hear from them again and see them again, but more, more, more importantly, uh, to work with, uh, with, with Ghazali and help uh, help him uh, 
uh, help uh, other indigenous peoples uh, uh, connect together and, and, and share their aspirations and, and thoughts. Um, and it, it's been such a great experience. Um, and I, I, I just have to thank, you know, um, Ghazali and Thomas for, 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 their, for their friendship and, um, and, and, and uh, allowing me to, to be part of the team. Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next, uh, next project. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I can, uh, I can contribute in any way. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, yeah, strong words again. again. I don't see the. Change. I, I think it's been crying many times. That's why he changed the 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 format that you would have a one person focus on the sending. But um, I think the Melanie could, if if you still have something to make us Ali cry more, that would be welcomed. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I just really uh, appreciate also what uh, what Tumo said, no, that uh, I think it was very well said. And, and we're honored to be here uh, with you guys as non-Indigenous and we continue being uh, inspired by you guys. We need you, no, the world needs you. <laughs> and uh, no, it's very true. And uh, it's the end of the beginning of the beginning. I just wanted to quote that. I know that uh, it's Tomo that is the master of detecting the quotes, but he's also very good at making them, especially that one. So I think that's a good one. It's the end of the beginning of the beginning. And uh, I don't know how to make uh, Gasali cry. I can maybe do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Gasali, it's been a pretty interesting ride with this episode series. So your thoughts, your your final words, your concluding marks, your motions, please. Well, like if you want to give me a cry, it'll make me emotional. Um, I was already emotional, um, like from when we started this whole thing, to be honest. Um, did not know uh, that, um, that I or we were capable of doing this. Um, and then did this actually exceeded my expectations um, already um, in terms of, yeah, getting all the people, um, the, the, how comfortable people were, uh, were, were uh, with as a, in the team, but also as a panelist. Um, so that already, like, yeah, like throughout every day, like it was, was hard work, yes, but like it was um, also like has a good, yeah, felt very, very great actually that, that, that there's people that believe in this, believe in the idea and willing to work hard um, for, for it. Um, so in, in that sense, um, I would follow Chief Little Child by, by saying like, I'm very grateful. Um, gratitude is, um, the, the key word in all this, um, that everyone, um, Carson, Melanie, uh, Tomo, yourself, Thomas, uh, Justin, Hoki, um, uh, Johanna from, and Pascal from DOSIP, uh, Remy from DOSIP, uh, you know, and Ini as well. At, other people from TV in the as well, um, you know, they're like believed in this and like, all right, let's do this. Interpreters, like, let's do this. Let's let's let's, let's um, um, try to create this new path because we're creating a new path in, in, in this one. And and, and to, to be all honest, and to, to to say um to echo what what uh, what 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 uh, Thomas said, you know, I this is barely the start of the ideas that I have. Um, like I, I cannot help myself because uh, I see like whenever I listen, I see opportunities, um, and like I, I'd like love nothing more than to provide those opportunities um, for 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 Indian peoples um, to empower for em empowerment and inspiration, and um, you know, and I think this this is also a very good good good, good thing that um, it not does not necessarily have to be. No, sorry, I, sorry, differently mindset is key like i i like mindset over talent and capacities like if, if you're willing to 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 do all this and be part of this whole thing um then you're a team and player in my book um you don't have to be a phd student or have phds or whatever mindset is key in, in all this uh, and it doesn't matter if you have if you're indigenous or non-indigenous um, at least in my book you know like uh, yeah, yeah if, if it's the right mindset uh, you're um, um, I, 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 I love to work with you. Um, so, 
I, th I think this is like a combination of, of like how I've been thinking about things and 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 now it, it's more like all right what can we do um to make the movement even stronger um because uh, like um it has been said in the in the in the series already like, uh, how about in indigenous indigenous embassy in in geneva new york vienna uh, nairobi like like I'm, I'm even willing to think as big and as as audacious like that um and i'm i'm and i have the patience like, like if it takes 21 years it will take 21 years but um as a patient to 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 think like that but also i love nothing more than to work every day uh, as much as, as humanly possible to, to get through that you know so um um yeah so like sneak preview was given uh yesterday a little bit uh but obviously this this cannot be the end of the how to indigenous hashtag how to indigenous now we're only just going to deepen and, amp and amplify it. Um, we're going more deep into business and human rights and as participation and self-determination. Um, do like a virtual global indigenous, uh, yeah, meeting, uh, boot camp, if you will, um, you know, so that we all can get to the same level. Uh, I, th I think that is very important. Um, if, does, does this platform have to be the platform? I don't know. Uh, doesn't not have to be, um, but I do see an opportunity, and I'm I like nothing more than just to like all right speed over over comfort, just to like, like just try to do things um, uh, as much as possible, and then let the movement decide if it's if it's valuable to them or not. Um, so that's why I don't add a lot of num value to numbers like, like two viewers, zero viewers, one viewer. We're gonna put on a show. I value um, like the content the context that's what that's what i value and um so so that that is um uh, yeah like uh why i very much appreciate uh, the people uh, that, that are working with uh, that, that are working on this because uh, again it brings in the ma mindset bring, brings in their context um so yeah gratuity grateful gratefulness um is something that is um um, yeah, that's that's an emotion that's raining for me. So sorry, um, no no cries, no tears, uh, but um, just just in terms of emotion, like like yeah, like, I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. Good. The slow jam is moving from from slow jam to a mega jam, so I think it's it's time to to try to wrap up now. Um, thanks for your time. Um, as you can see, the, this uh, episode was done uh, a little bit in a different style. Uh, it was my style. So always time goes double, as I usually speak too long. <laughs> so so this was kind of reflection of, of that too. But I think it's really good that, um, that we were able to discuss a little bit jam around what happened and show some examples also how and why people can do something if they feel feel it and feel it and at least there is one option one possibility example there shared now and i think that is the valuable part of 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 this these discussions thank you for everybody i think that the whole group is really appreciative for all the panelists all the viewers that have been following and commenting the whole process but especially the, the interpretations um, and in the interpreters. I think that is something that has been really special in, in, in this episode and series and um, that um, that the eight episodes and the series was done in translation with, with, with four or five languages. Really unique thing to happen. And, and, and I think that this is a pathfinder uh, that, that the series on how in the international field do, during the COVID situation or other pandemic restriction times, we can continue the topics to be discussed, uh, to be kept alive and, and so forth, remembered by all of us. Thank you for joining us in the, in the that was supposed to be a slow jam game as a mega jam. I'm out. Thank you to everybody.